Wow. <laughs> you don't know what direction you're in. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 they talked about it at the last meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Molly, if you'd be so kind to help me with the roll call. Yep, sure. Alder Person Iker. Here. Commissioner Kahalen. Here. Commissioner Hausman. Here. Commissioner Jashinsky. Here. Commissioner Merrick. Here. Commissioner Schultz. Here. Commissioner Weiler. Here. Mayor Atwell. Present. Okay, we will move on to number four minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. Okay, as is normally what uh, we've been doing over the last few years when we have a new development come in or something that you know, could potentially be a more controversial topic, um, I like to have the applicants come up and give a little overview. That's all it'll be is an overview. But the idea behind doing it is to give the, the folks, uh, before they give their citizens' comments, just a flavor for what the applicant will be proposing so you hear the latest information from the applicant. So with that being said, if we could have the folks from the Miller Group come on up. Oh. Mayor, with oh, did I miss the consent agenda? Agenda? What? I, that's No, I don't. <laughs> Mayor, if it, if it, it might be good to do the consent agenda. To get them out of here? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. You're, that's correct. That would a, be a better a idea. Yeah. <laughs> Back up. Just sorry. a minute. <laughs> sorry. Okay. We will move to citizens' comments for items on the consent agenda. Any comments for items on the consent agenda? This is item number five. Item number five. Citizens' comments on the consent agenda. Seeing none, citizens' comments are now closed. Okay. Number six, the consent agenda. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. OK. Everybody that's on the consent agenda, you are approved. You are free to leave. Every time we have somebody stay the whole meeting because they don't know they're on the consent agenda. Is there anybody unsure if they're on the consent agenda or not? Anybody unsure? Okay. Is there a particular applicant you want me to name out? They walked out. Okay. All righty. So now we will uh, move over to um, public, hearing. Uh, public hearing. We'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, item number seven, public hearing number one. Uh, zoning code text amendment related to application deadlines. City of Delafield Planning Commission. Zoning code text amendment modifies the application deadline so that they are consistent for all types of applications and to provide staff additional review time to ensure applications are complete. Is there anyone that would like to speak to uh, public hearing number one? Public hearing number one, come on up. Good evening, Phil Casson, 1208 Genesee Street. Uh, I'd like to give you one word regarding my opinion regarding uh, Amy Barrow's request for changing the city code to modify application deadlines. Yes. For the last year's alderman, I openly questioned if the city was meeting the necessary guidelines for public notices, both the type that are mailed to citizens as well as the ones plural, ones that are published in the newspaper because there should be two of them. I also questioned whether this was enough time for Mrs. Barris to actually accomplish what she needed. I raised this question directly to Tom Hafner, as well as to the, directly to the entire council. And the response was that we did not want to slow down an important process and maybe, maybe add or lose, I should say, a month <coughs> in developing plans for a city. Mrs. Barrows is now requesting this herself. And all I can say in one word is yes. Please act on Mrs. Barrow's request to change city code so that it is now legal. Or we are uh, so that Mrs. Barrow's, as she points out, uh, our code then would adhere to state statutes. Please also, yes, take any steps necessary 
to allow Amy the time to process properly the applications. And finally, yes, please adhere to the state statutes to make sure that public notices are posted properly twice as required. Thank you for your service, and thank you particularly to Mrs. Barrows for all of your efforts to keep this commission, the city, operating both professionally, efficiently, and legally. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any other comments for public hearing number one? Any other comments for public hearing number one? Seeing none, public hearing number one is now closed. Okay. Okay, so we're eight of citizens' comments other than on the consent agenda. Okay, now we're gonna go back to what I was discussing before and I'll ask the Miller Group to come on up to give their review. No. I can... We're not moving to their items, it's just an overview. Do you want me to just put the map though? <coughs> um, Chris Miller, Miller Marriott Construction, 249 Pauline Avenue, Heartland, Wisconsin. Um, what we'll be proposing tonight is um, taking um, some current property that's zoned institutional uh, in St. John's campus um, and rezoning it into R4, straight R4, uh, 34 lots on the southern end of this um, layout. Um, the three to the north, um, we are proposing that um, they're already zoned R4. However, we would uh, divide them with the CSM, those three lots. Uh, the idea behind this is to create a walkable community to downtown uh, Delafield. Um, I don't know if we had an opportunity. We did create some streetscapes and some ideas of homes we thought that would be going here. Um, we're also looking to enhance the area with some water management, stormwater management. Um, there's some uh, uh, retention areas and a walkway and also some uh, retention areas and some easements behind the lots to help alleviate some of the water um, that can build up in this area. Can you speak a little bit closer into the microphone? Sure, there? I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah. Do you want me to go over? Uh, yeah, it seems that some of the folks in the back are more able to hear. Okay, I'll you try to. You can move it. the mic closer, too. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, so we are proposing um, to take um, some property in St. John's, John's campus that's currently zoned uh, institutional and rezone it into straight R4. That is the southern property, the 34 lots. The northern three lots are already zoned R4 and we're proposing to divide those with a CSM. Um, we would take, there are two roads that pass through. Um, those would be removed and we would create a pedestrian walkway connecting um, uh, the streets to the north and the south. Um, and that area will also allow us to do some water management or stormwater management in this area. Uh, there's also some stormwater management to help enhance the area behind some of the lots to the west. We have um, taken about a third of the lots and made them what I would call straight R4, about 66 feet wide. And the remaining ones we've made wider to create some variation so we can do a variation of houses to create a, a nice streetscape. We did provide some ideas on what we thought these streetscapes could look like um, in here. And we also will be retaining the arches to St. John's. Um, the St. John's has created an easement um, for us to maintain that, that arch. And, and quite frankly, we like it and would like to lean into it. So was that loud enough? Yeah, I okay. heard it. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. And just to remind you, everybody, these are two separate applications, both on the St. John's campus, but they're two separate applications. So now if we could have the golf course group come up. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Rick Nelson with Hendricks Commercial Properties. I'm here with my colleague Mike Henry and our engineering consultant Josh Padelko. 
We are bringing to the table tonight a concept plan to redevelop the St. John's Golf Course into single family homes. At, at this point, um, we have a concept plan for you to consider, but we do not have um, any architectural standards established except for the fact that we are committed to uh, an architectural design that um, both honors the history of the campus as well as the city of Delafield. And um, I will turn it over to Josh to kind of take you through some of the details that we'll talk about later, but we're excited about our plan and, and um, looking forward to sharing it with you. Thank you. Uh, everybody hear me okay? All right. Uh, the property itself, this layout, has gone through an evolution and iterations. We have, in, in the land that we're looking at, 52.27 acres. Uh, of that, today, 50.27 acres is uh, an RE1 type zoning, but it, it's a golf course and there's two acres of C1 type land uh, along the river. Uh, along the river on the north side is a footpath that's formed over the years. I think the neighborhood has just sort of used it as an unofficial trail. Uh, when you look close at this plan, you'll see an easement that we're providing to the public to really kind of create a, a, an official public trail and access around the north side of the river to get to the park. Uh, the layout itself, though, looks to stay at just at 50 lots. We have over 50 acres of RE1 land. We have 50 lots. Uh, and the way we see the, the uses is, is transitional, where we have one acre lots completely consistent with the RE1 zoning. Uh, and you'll actually see in our neighborhood description, we are proposing that all those uh, lots along our western border have more open space <coughs> than even the RE1 zoning requires. We're proposing 33,000 square feet of open space per lot be deed restricted uh, in our declarations uh, to make sure that stays permanent. Uh, we also understand the need and sensitivity for landscaping uh, along our western border uh, so on top of having large lots, we have a 30-foot uh, landscape easement, which as we come forward with future plans, we'll have a landscape plan that supports and starts to show some of that landscaping that goes in there. Uh, and, and definitely open to feedback and input from the neighborhood on that, but we will have a plan that will bring that forward. We also have a landscape easement along Oakwood Road, along with a uh, pedestrian path, a paved trail, uh, following along our entire frontage. You also see a, a sidewalk that goes through our, our road system, and the road system is intentional in bringing people into the site, but also creating a sense of setting. We use uh, intentional curves to really break sight lines, slow traffic, follow topography, and set homes where is, it's most ideally to locate, locate them. Uh, you'll see uh, three points of connection to the existing road system. Uh, two that connect to the subdivision to the east and then uh, our main entrance to Oakwood to the north. Uh, we have several cul-de-sacs that'll be landscaped, uh, large green islands in the middle. Uh, an outlot with a paved trail uh, gives us ADA accessible connection to Cushing Park. Uh, we believe this is a very pedestrian friendly walkable area and, and in doing this development we believe we can help the neighborhood come to and through and really benefit uh, from that pedestrian circulation that is just really unique to this area. Uh, the lots that you'll see, we have one acre lots consistent and exceeding the RE1 zoning along our, our western boundary. In the middle of the property, uh, we transitioned to 30,000 square foot lots, a uh, little bit narrower, uh, same setbacks as RE1, a little bit less open space. And as we get uh, along the smaller established neighborhood, to the east, uh, you'll see we have a minimum half acre lots uh, and a and little bit less on the open space again, a uh, little narrower lots and a front setback consistent at 50 feet, but a slight reduction in the side setback. Pretty consistent though with what we see in the city from other, uh, other types of development. Uh, the property itself is high elevation wise on the north side and, and gently kind of slopes south. A lot of this area today drains west 
through the existing subdivision. As we do this development, we're able to introduce uh, infiltration and stormwater management and let that road and our, and our plan really promote uh, natural recharge of the groundwater and stop that runoff that uh, eventually finds its way into the neighborhood and, and really reduce what goes there and instead control it on our site and ultimately direct it to the river more directly and not through anyone's backyard. <laughs> so we're trying to do a, a lot of benefit in creating a, a sensitive, well thought out, um, sympathetic to the neighbors type development that also transitions to kind of this urban, uh, suburban <coughs> core in, in our community. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for the overview. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move on to citizens' comments on items other than the consent agenda, items and public hearing. So we have a lot of people in the room today, so it has been our tradition for the last several years that, you know, we try to keep things moving through the process. So we're going to ask everyone to cap at three minutes you're speaking and I'd also encourage you that if you hear other folks come up before you and say things that you agree with you know it, to save us all time and try to get us through this process because we want to hear everybody here um, you know say I agree with this concept and this concept and then certainly add any additional new information that you have so and please be respectful to everyone somebody here is, is has a different opinion than yours that's okay that's what we're here to discuss and uh, I'll remind you also please no clapping or booing alrighty <laughs> Susie I see your hand up first you will be first Susie Thompson 700 Milwaukee Street um, Molly are you able to turn to page 142 that's, thank you, Amy, similar to what you're seeing right now, but um, they, were the, they were talking about a connection to Cushing Park, but on page 142, it is shown a connecting possible road. If it's a pathway, it's a wonderful idea. If it's a road, um, many people very strongly object. Um, so I hope that it is considered a pathway and not a road reasons being that uh, the, the park does not have the ability to fend off or control um, that much traffic going through. And after 31 years in real estate, I know this project is not gonna be done in six months, it's not gonna be done in two years, it's gonna be several years under construction. We don't need trucks um, delivering material goods. I can understand from a fire, Point if the fire trucks would be able to get to the subdivision quicker, but this is not eminent domain of the city taking private property for <coughs> public use. We don't turn parks into roadways to connect a private project. So, very much against that. That being said, the proposal on the design is beautifully done. Um, Many people in the downtown area will be affected by more traffic on, on Highway C, and people off of Oakwood will be affected by traffic on the road that they haven't seen before. Um, that's a beautiful area for development, and I think Hendricks is a wonderful group to be able to be doing it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Who would like to be next? Come on up. Uh, Jennifer Jeske, 110 Hickory Court. And um, in respect for everybody's time, at the last minute we compiled a list of people, some present, some not, who are in agreement with the comments that I will make. I have a pr I've printed that list to provide to the Planning Commission, and if anyone feels, I, I guess I can read it off quickly. Mm -hmm. No? The, it's your time. The names. <laughs> I'll just, I'll provide it. There's about um, 19 or 20 uh, names here. Uh, I do agree with the comments that were previously made on the park, but I will read what I have written, as I said, because I have others that have, have agreed here. 
So in regard to the initial proposal from the Hendricks Group for the development of the same St. John's Golf Course, we want to preface our comments by uh, with a thank you to the city, the elected officials, other personnel and volunteers. We appreciate your commitment, time, and thoughtful consideration while serving our community. Additionally, we want to make mention of the town hall meeting we had in April regarding this development. There were, there were over 100 people in attendance, and I know of a number of people who would have been in attendance tonight if not for the short notice of the date change and the upcoming holiday weekend. We have a number of concerns regarding this development overall and specific to this initial proposal. One of the primary concerns is the consideration of extending Cushing Park Road North through the park into the southwest corner of the new development. This is not included in the proposal put forth by the Hendricks Group, and we appreciate that as we feel that they took this into concern um, and consideration as it was voiced repeatedly by all at the town hall meeting. However, it appears the city has some desire to continue to consider this. We feel the extension of Cushing Park Road is rife with problems such as safety, preservation of wetlands and trails, including the Ice Age Trail, overall green space and nature, compromising the integrity and amb ambiance of the park, and creating other traffic issues which will adversely uh, affect existing properties as well as the new properties. This connection to Oakwood has the potential to become a cut through all the way to Highway 18. The city and citizens of Delafield have invested time, effort, and money in developing the Memorial Walkway, the park itself, the access to the Bark River, and bike paths to promote recreation and the enjoyment of this connection to town. This is an asset which many joyfully utilize. To now put a roadway through this makes no sense and would be detrimental to all that has come before and what will come in the future. If the size and scope of this development is such that it requires a road through the ge this gem of Delafield, then perhaps this is reason enough for the size and the scope to be reconsidered. The proposed land use development does offer some various lot sizes and we can understand this seems desirable and appreciate that Delafield should offer a variety of lot sizes. However, over, the overall average of lot sizes appears to fall short of truly meeting the RE1 zoning. While proposing um, a, a planned use development um, that can get around the zoning by not being subject to the exact zoning requirements, we would hope that Hendricks be more reasonable, reducing the number of lots a bit and increasing the green space, including the width of the vegetative borders and setbacks especially the rear setback. This would be more in keeping with existing neighborhoods. Valley Road Place was developed with a 50-foot rear setback and 140 homes on 175 acres, which is an average of 1.2 acres per home. For example, some of the lots on the west bordering with the existing Valley Road Place neighborhood are shallower and abut a shallow existing lot leaving the potential for the homes to be closer despite the larger lot size. Additionally, we would like to see the developer provide some trees, conifers in the vegetative border, as well as allow the option for existing and new homeowners to augment those trees provided at their own expense. We hope that the Commission and Hendricks Group will bear this information and our concerns in mind going forward and strive to ensure this development is complementary and cohesive to the existing neighborhoods and Cushing Park. Great, thank you very much for your comments. I'd like to be next. Yes. Ken Beckman, 36 Oakwood Drive, not Oakwood Road. Um, I was on the economic planning group and I would like to state that this proposal is much better than anything that came forward at the time of those meetings. And I am generally okay with it. And I really like the way it starts with the one acre lots against the subdivision and gently translates and transfers down to the half acre lots. I'm really not clear on the idea of green space. In order to have a planned unit development, you're supposed to have a certain amount of green space 
And I'm not clear how the athletic fields that are not open to the public or open to the community count as green space. Um, I know that they're talking about having the stadium and fields in perpetuity as green space. There doesn't appear to be a commitment to what happens to them when sometime in the future decades the academy vacates them if the developer is going to convert them into parks or what happens to them and who maintains that area after the academy vacates it. I heard the previous comments about the setbacks and the one thing I'm not clear about is with the landscape easement how that changes the setback. If it's a 20-foot setback on the rear property line and there is a 30-foot landscape easement, does that effectively make a 50-foot setback? It's not clear what how that works. I would also just say I agree with all of the comments about saying no to a Cushing Road extension. It simply creates a cut through through what would be a beautiful neighborhood for traffic wanting to avoid going through downtown and Genesee. It's not conducive to this proposed neighborhood. Too much traffic and of course all the previous comments about ruining parts of the park. Great, thank you for your thank comments. You. Come on up, Jen. Good evening. Jim Ryer, 924 Lake Drive, City of Delafield. Um, I thought I'd bring somewhat of a unique perspective to our meeting tonight um, because as the former chairperson of Park and Recreation Commission um, and my commissioners at the time put together the five-year plan 2020 to 24 and I would hope that this body would consider and be in compliance with those related to two subjects one of uh, the Cushing Park roadway and two, the biking requirements as you know from the comprehensive plan and from the five-year plan that was put together which was approved 21-0 through Park and Rec Planning Commission and Common Council favorably responded to. So what happens is there's no mention in the entire uh, document of anything involving a, the Cushing Roadway connection, which has been brought up recently. And all, I've, all I could gather from watching the events is that there was a handwritten note on the map saying roadway connection. Uh, it wasn't on the agenda specifically for tonight. So I think because it involves a park, it should have been before the Park and Recreation Commission. It was not, but having said that, it would appear to me that any roadway uh, that would be done in that area would be number one, inconsistent with the plan, which never identifies any such roadway. Number two, would require uh, some significant discussions with the people who are involved in it, such as the, um, the family of the veterans, whether this is a, con this is a memorial park and you're converting a memorial park into a roadway. And as one, as the leader of the uh, Friends of Bark River, we spent 750 man hours this year, or over the last seven years, cleaning up the river, removing invasive species. And I thought we had a pretty good handle on that, but when I see a roadway, that's a new kind of invasive species that's entering into the picture. And I strongly oppose it from a procedural, substantive way and in addition to that, I've had the benefit because I live downtown area, I walk there all the time, and I see families out there in the river tubing, my grandchildren tubing. You're going to tube underneath uh, some motorized truck coming through there? Not happening. What are going to happen to the wildlife? What are going to happen to the, the, road, the shorelines that we put together to access the river? And families we see every day in the summertime, picnic tables kids walking down into the water. It's not going to happen. So from a change of character, change of purpose, 
and a change overall of our brand, Delafield, which should be sharing it with neighbors. My neighbor is not a 6,000 pound vehicle. It's human life. And you're taking away human life by putting this roadway in. Okay, as to the second question, the biking. Specifically, if you look at the plan, the biking requires in any new development consideration of hiking biking trails. Hey Jim, try to make this quickly. You're, you're over your three minutes, so okay. do your best. Okay, so I'm just saying comply with the plan. Biking is a requirement to be considered in any new development, and just a pedestrian walkway in Oakwood is inconsistent with the plan, which specifically addresses Oakwood Avenue having a mixed use, which is biking, hiking, not a six foot walkway, because of minimum standards in any biking mixed use is 10 at the very worst, at the very lowest, eight, depending on engineering. Six doesn't cut it if you're a biker. I'm a biker, you run two bikes going the opposite direction on six feet, you're caught, you're gonna cause an accident. Safety, big issue. Thanks very much, appreciate it. Appreciate your comments as well. Who'd like to be next? Come on up. Hi, um, my name is uh, Katie Christine. Uh, my address is 57 Oakwood Drive. Uh, so we are located across from the golf course um, on Oakwood and um, I didn't prepare any comments, uh, but I'll speak extemporaneously about two things that concern me. So I hear a lot of discussion um, from folks that are not in favor of the road into Cushing Park. So um, I, I support that as well, but that's gonna drive traffic to Oakwood. Um, and so I have concern about um, the smaller, or the uh, greater density for the lots that are being proposed along Oakwood. Um, I'd love to see one acre to be consistent with the western side of the um, development. Um, we talk about sensitivity to neighbors and um, being consistent. Uh, my lot is 3.7 acres and my neighbor next to me is 2.2 acres. So half acre lots across from us is not consistent with us. Not that I'm asking for 3.7 acre lots, but I'd like to see larger lots. Um, the other consideration I'd like to point out or ask for is um, the existing dwelling. So my living room faces um, the golf course. Uh, I'm not sure where this entrance driveway is going to land in the subdivision. I've accepted that there'll be an entrance across from me, but I hope that there's consideration given to where it's placed so that I don't have um, headlights in my living room window. So just a little sensitivity to where that is placed with the existing dwellings. That's Great, it. thank you very much. You're welcome. Come on up, sir. Mr. Barons? Uh, I'm, I'm Jim Barron, uh, 757 Garrison Court. And uh, I'm certainly coming here to speak in favor of both of these plans that were presented tonight. Uh, I'm guilty of probably bringing up the, the 1991 master plan shows Cushing Park extended. So if people understand how things work in Delafield is we always focus on the master plan from 91 and say we got to follow through that. Uh, we can amend it to change it, but it's out there. And it was put in there because of the concerns about traffic in downtown and on Highway C. Um, there may be valid reasons to re revisit it, so I'm not going to argue on that. Um, I just have those, I still have those concerns from 30 years ago. One idea I had today, I sent Amy a memo on it, is um, there's one other location, because she mentioned in one of her discussions trying to find another location uh, to connect other than Highway C. And the, the one I thought of is Spanger. You can see it's a dedicated road. Now it has all the issues of crossing the wetland. I think it's a big lift, but um, I think it could make some sense to run something like that down there. It's a multi-year project. It's probably a multi-million dollar project. Uh, but it would, it, would take, it would provide a lot of relief out of that neighborhood. And my idea would be connected to the end of Wells Street. 
so it would not be the main north south but it would it would get you through it's next to the um, it's next to the fire department the issue would be you're going to lose a ball a, 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 a soccer field it's the same argument we had on the city hall going there so i appreciate that but I don't think the Cushing Park should be extended, even though I, I questioned it a month ago when I talked to the mayor and, and uh, Amy. It, this development is such high quality, and to put a road through there that's more than just the subdivision road is, I think, just denigrates from it. And we want to have high quality stuff, so I think we should pursue these, both of these projects, though. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, who'd like to be next, sir? Come on up. Thank you for your time, everybody. Ken Urchel, 51 Oakwood Drive. Can you spell your last name, please? With the letter U. R C H E L L. And then repeat the address one more time. 51. 51 Oakwood. Okay, thank you. My neighbor spoke earlier, Katie, and I would dovetail her comments. We're kind of a, a tweener. I've got 2.23 acres. There's not a place there yet, but they are right next to me. And John. Yeah, please move up. And John on the other side. Yep. But we've got some larger properties. We're kind of a tweener. Um, dividing it doesn't look feasible, but we are surrounded right behind us by Copperfield. And those are one acre on average, if you include the green space and everything, which is how subdivisions go. So they're probably three quarters here and there, and then some green space. If you just walk half a block to the east, well, they get a little smaller, the acreages do. Um, and if we're going to be living a, just across from what looks to be medium density half acres uh, if you included the green space probably you might nudge it up a little bit but i would be in favor of the whole circumference or at least the west border of the plans and the c property the north border be in one acre um, it does give the neighborhood a little bit of a not an isolation, but just a little bit more of a buffer, but people are still welcome to enter and, and go through there and um, feel like it's a neighborhood and it's part of their home. <coughs> um, so I would support a little bit more on the north side. As far as the placement of the driveway, um, yeah, you don't want it shining in your, your front window. I'm a little bit to the west of Katie and John, but I, fear, I, I hear their concerns you know, traffic pulling in and out and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm opposed to all options. I think it looks good. And um, I think the Hendricks does a good job when you look at some of their other properties that they've included in the plan, uh, whether it's in Heartland or the Sanctuary of Delafield. They're pretty well done in my mind. Um, so I'm open to um, inviting them into our neighborhood and seeing what becomes of it. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah. You'd like to be next, sir, come on up. Jeff Wittrock, 214 White Pine Road. Um, I've got a list of five questions and three concerns. A lot of them have already been discussed, so I, I think I'll forgo with uh, mentioning the concerns. But, And I do have something that I could pass out to the, the Hendricks team or uh, for the, the record of the meeting. Um, first of all, thank you to Hendricks. It looks like you've done a fantastic job. You've showed sensitivity to a lot of the concerns of the, the neighbors, and, and I, I think that uh, for the most part we welcome what uh, is being proposed here so thank you for that uh, as far as questions and these are rather specific but and this one was touched on will the current athletic fields be ironclad protected from future development <clears throat> the concern was what happens god forbid st john's goes away do we have land that is open for development at that point and do we all of a sudden have a much higher density 
um, development than what we think we're getting at this time. Uh, will the trees along Oakwood Drive on the north side of the property be maintained? These enhance the scenic nature of that stretch of road. Does the Bark River setback zone include the heavily wooded hillside along the north side of the river? There are many old growth oak trees here which contribute to the overall, I quote, Delafield experience, unquote, along with all other well-known um, tree benefits and are worthy of maintaining. Will the developer pay for the traffic study that has been suggested? And is the developer willing to, to pay for the access road through Cushing Park? And those, those are my questions. All my other comments, I think, have pretty well been, are well articulated. So where would I leave my? You can leave it with the clerk. But thank you very much for participating in your comments. Come on up. You're kind of behind the pole back there. Have I been missing you? <laughs> Which I do frequently. Hi, Marilee Gardner, W66 Oakwood Drive. And um, I only have one question, one comment. Um, listening to most people say, I respect that. I want to compliment Hendricks on their sensitivity to the park. So the only question I have is, who drew that in? Why is that drawn in? I mean, is it something that the, the bridge, that they want to extend it? How did that get drawn in? No one can answer me on the council here. It's, it's not a two-way discussion now, but we're writing down your questions. We'll ask them, what, we'll do our best to answer them when the applicants come up. Okay, so that, that's my biggest concern when I saw that. I thought, okay, why was that just stuck in there when we had these lovely trails? So, thank you. Great, thank you. Who'd like to be next? Who'd like to be next? Come on up. Good evening, Phil Casson, 1208 Genesee Street. I first would like to say uh, thank you to the uh, Marriott Miller organization that uh, are the developers of the sanctuary and I think that's a great addition to the city of Delafield. I really like how that has turned out. I know it was not problem free. Some things that had to be ironed out for a few years after that even, but it's a very nice development. Uh, quality homes, curved streets, uh, lots of varying sizes. And I mentioned the sanctuary because if that's what was going across the street on Highway C in between St. John's and Wisconsin Avenue, that would be great. However, that is a straight city block, not allowing for any curved streets, and putting 37 houses in there will make it look more like the east side of Milwaukee. About one third of those lots are 66 feet wide. Subtract 10 feet on each side, you're down to 44 feet for a house, subtract a 24 foot wide car garage. We're gonna see one of two things. We're either gonna see a lot of houses really close together with a garage running right in front of them. So we won't see houses, we'll actually see garages. Or else we're going to see a lot of very narrow houses. I appreciate the fact that the lots do vary in size, that is nice. I think it's also quite acceptable that those city streets would be vacated if in exchange for green space. In the packet that was provided by Mill and Marriott, they've got a nice picture of the rain gardens the, uh, that take the, some of the runoff there. That's a very nice picture, but I'd like to suggest that none of the other pictures in the packet are accurate. They're not an accurate rendition of how close the houses would be. Houses will be 20, as little sometimes as 20 or 25 feet apart from each other. Add in driveway, it's just going to be really, really packed. It's going to be very dense. Um, I also have an issue with the green space that does exist, and I would not want the city to have to pay for or maintain that. I would hope there would be a neighborhood association of some kind that would be charged with being responsible for those rain gardens. Rain gardens are natural, they look great, but they do need some maintenance. Uh, I would like to just point out that the lot size that is indicated over there is actually, the average lot size, is actually thrown off by these three lots to the far north. Those are larger lots and skew the average lot size. I'd also like to point out that the average lot size 
is not even as large as the smallest lot in the sanctuary. So if we recreated the sanctuary, I think that'd be a great addition. Uh, but I, I don't know how that's possible. I would like to see green space, those quality houses, uh, the sidewalks are included. So uh, I, I think that could all look very nice. But very lastly, I'd also like to add that traffic is just going to be increasing. There's no question about it. Between these 37 houses, just in this section, not to mention some on the golf course, the top of that hill is already very dangerous, realizing this is not public works, but uh, that needs to be considered. There needs to be a traffic study. Uh, people do not stop currently, even with those lights flashing for the pedestrian crossing. Cars just whiz right through there. The speed limit is 35 and needs to be reduced. The hill may be flattened, something, but it's a very dangerous place, especially when p police cars and emergency vehicles are going 45, 55 miles an hour down that, up that hill and over the top of the crest. Thank you for all your work. I'll see you again in the future, I'm sure. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Survey in the back. Good evening, Ken Harrow, uh, 327 Anderson Drive. I'm from the Harrow clan of Oconomowoc. Don't tell anyone I live in Delafield, please. <laughs> um, I live there with my partner, Margaret Snyder. Um, we've, we've always known this area was going to be developed. I kept telling her, don't worry about it. Um, it will be good for Delafield. However, I'm not so sure. Um, I know the developer is going to win. I know the builder will win. I know the city will win. It's a lovely development. However, it seems the neighborhood that takes the brunt of it are the homes on DeCoven, Wisconsin Ave, uh, Anderson Drive. It's that neighborhood. And it's really a charming neighborhood, extremely diverse. And that's why I like it. It's, you have great conversations because it's a different type of neighborhood. Um, you have two streets, or you're having the 37 homes being developed, so we're gonna get that traffic. Then you have the larger neighborhood having two streets that will exit into that, into our neighborhood. So, you know, we are taking the brunt of both of the developments. Talking to some of the neighbors, um, very reasonable people. Again, everyone's aware that this will be developed, and you know who's developing it are very high-quality people. But we just ask that you consider reducing the density of the 37 homes, and then you know, have you have you walked on Anderson Drive? You don't want a street exiting on Anderson Drive. That's the purpose of Oakwood. It's a large street. So it's easy enough to flip that north end of that road and have two exits, entrances on Oakwood. It just makes sense. Appreciate your time and your work here. Thank you. Who would like to be next, sir? Uh, Steve Twillier, uh, live Steve? at 1311 DeCoven Street. Can you spell T that last name? T-H-U-I-L-L-I-E-Z. So like the last two, I'm going to address the um, the 37 units. And then can you just, before, I'm sorry, I apologize, oh, before you get going, um, your address one more time. 1311 DeCoven. I also own the duplex at 1305-1309. Okay. Thank you, sir. So that property actually borders, it's across the street from the development of the 37 units. And I just have a couple of notes, and, and I agree with uh, the alderman who spoke two, two back. Can you talk into the microphone oh, a little bit closer? Uh, I talk? agree with the alderman who spoke two back, uh, pretty much except that I don't think they should vacate those two streets. Um, and like the last gentleman, I agree with them about our neighborhood. Um, we are gonna take the brunt of it. Uh, I just wrote down a couple of notes uh, currently on Wisconsin Avenue, um, we have 15 driveways 
on both sides of that street, and when that project's done, it'll be 31. And the other thing I have is that our three blocks are parallel and exactly, I believe, the same size, take up the same amount of area. And there's currently 27 homes in those three blocks, opposed to the 37 they're gonna put in there. I assume they're gaining three or four off of just taking care of the road, getting the roads out of there. Um, and then I do also agree that my whole concern during this whole, uh, you know, St. John's has talked about developing that land even before Hendricks bought it, that um, traffic would come through our neighborhood uh, because those streets are too small to accept not only that traffic, but the extra, what did I say, about 16 driveways just on Wisconsin Avenue. That's 16 extra driveways on three blocks. So I guess it'd be nice if Hendricks could try to maybe make that three blocks compatible with our three blocks, keep the roads in, maybe have some houses. Those three blocks have entryways all the way around the block instead of just one straight road, as the alderman said, with 17 driveways. So um, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you much for your time. Great, thank you. Who would like to be next, sir? Hi, I'm uh, Jim Nelson. I live at 604 St. John's Drive. Uh, I, my home, um, my wife and I have lived there for 33 years now. We own the property directly across from the formal entrance to uh, St. John's uh, Northwestern Academies, uh, right on St. John's Drive and Genesee. And I'm concerned, as has uh, Phil has mentioned, and this last gentleman, about the, the density of the development called um, uh, Beacon Hill. The only way to get in and out of these 30-some <coughs> homes are using St. John's Road, which is an extension of St. John's Drive, where I live, and Wisconsin, <coughs> to have 34 homes listed um, on St. John's Road will necessitate um, <coughs> what he said 17 driveways. Well with houses, as Phil mentioned, some with setbacks, you know, um, on each side, 10, 10 feet on each side. So that creates um, a density that we're not used to. You're trying to get around it with green space, but the green space with sidewalks is just going to, um, um, going to eat up everything, eat up that green space. Um, we're mainly concerned if there's 34 homes. In, in, in this day and age, uh, people have more than one car. So there's going to be a lot more traffic coming in and out onto Genesee Street. And we've already heard um, that uh, there are problems with uh, coming through the city on C with all the congestion and the noise. Well, we have a lot of noise and congestion where, where we live on on Genesee and I would hate to have that intensified because now it's very difficult to even get on to Genesee Street to get into the city or to go north. Uh, add another 34, <coughs> 74 cars, whatever is going to be uh, using that, that space is going to be quite dangerous. Uh, some time ago the city did put a crosswalk there uh, by the house. Uh, and uh, people don't pay attention to it because they didn't lower the speed limit. The speed limit wasn't lowered until it gets into the city of 25, but coming out of the city, it's 35. Nobody goes 35 up a hill going north to get out of the city. So my main concern that I think uh, the Beacon Hill development should uh, take a serious look at is reducing the number of, of uh, homes that will go in there and uh, figure out another way of, uh, of not using the two streets of Genesee, uh, of St. John's Road and 
Wisconsin. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who'd like to be next? Come on up. I'm Barry Rogers, 306 Oakwood Drive. So I am on the northeast side of the development. So I look directly out at the golf course. Um, I've heard density mentioned a lot tonight, and we're worried about that too for all the reasons other people have brought up, <clears throat> including the flavor of Delafield. I, was understanding that that would, may get developed someday when we bought it 20 some years ago. But I saw it was zoned R1, and if they were one acre lots, I don't think I'd have any issue with it. Also, since we're on the east side, um, I noticed in the plan and heard the discussion tonight that there's going to be a berm or some kind of vegetation on the west side between Valley Road and the development. And I would like to see that extended to the east side as well. I have a neighbor just to the south of me, and we will actually be affected. Our, my driveway is like 12 feet from the property line. So um, we'd like to see some kind of barrier, because I think we're going to be visually affected more than anyone else. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Anybody else like to speak? Sure. Come on up. Uh, my name is Kurt Blayhope D. I'm at 333 Oakwood Drive. Can you spell your last name, please? Sure. It's B L E H O V D. Um, I live essentially. I live essentially Maybe across one the street. More time with the address. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 333 Oakwood Drive. Okay. Thank you. And I live essentially across the street from Barry, a few houses to the east, but. Uh, between the traffic from where the roadway is going to come out on Oakwood and then the density plan with the 37 homes in Beacon Hill, I would like to see the developer um, consider um, putting fewer homes in there as well for the traffic patterns and all the other, some of the things that Mr. Rogers just mentioned as far as, you know, we, we'd like Delafield to be, have a certain feel and look to it and I think keeping that population density down <clears throat> will keep the traffic down for the folks on Anderson and the adjacent streets to Coven, um, but also I think that will cut down on the traffic on Oakwood and, and Highway C. Um, I just don't think we need the population or the quarter acre lots there. And also on Cushing Park, running a road through Cushing Park, um, I oppose that as well. I don't think we need to, um, I forget the gentleman, but having a Veterans Memorial Park and then running a road through it and trying to manage the traffic and people kayaking underneath the roadway and, and things like that. I oppose that as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. I think I saw some other hand up, sir. Come on up. Good evening. I'm uh, Marty Salal. I'm at 2234 West Shore Drive, but I also own the property at 421 Anderson Drive. Uh, my biggest complaint, I mean, I like the landscape buffers he's put on the couple sides, but the density, I think, is just in both developments is, is a little too too high, too dense. It's going to cause um, it's way too much traffic, and it's just changing the character of, of Oakwood and, and all the neighborhoods there. even. In St. John's, the lots are quite, quite a lot bigger than what they're proposing there. Those lots are very narrow and not as deep. And uh, the setbacks and the distance between the houses is just too close, too dense. And that's my biggest complaint. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Who would like to be next? Anybody else? Anyone else like to make comments? Come on up, sir. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We'll get you next. Hi, my name is Bill Buskuski. I live at 332. Can you spell your last name? Yes, B as in boy, U-S-K-U-S-K-I-E. And I'm at 332 Oakwood Drive. Thank you. OK, um, I kind of agree with a lot of the comments that uh, people have been talking about. I do like the, the concept of development of the, of the St. John's Golf Course. Um, but it's the same concern everybody else has as far as the density. 
in St. John's and in combination with bishops. Um, I understand that, you know, there's going to be development. We need to expand, we need to grow, and I see that. But I think you're congest you're jamming too much into a small area. One of the things that attracted us at Delafield was a small town community. And it's a beautiful little community, and we like it. It's getting busier, but that's okay. It's fun. You know, there's places to go. If you start adding this many more residents here, you're just congesting that much more in a small area. And what I'm hoping is that there is going to be a development. I see that. But I'm hoping that you can look at other areas just instead of just downtown area, instead of the St. John's Golf Course and also the Bishop's area. You can put some residents in there. I understand it. I think some of the concepts are beautiful. I actually like the layouts. Um, but it's just between the two concepts together, it's just creating too much traffic. And we already have a concern on Oakwood with some of the traffic there. But, you know, because we've had this conversation before when they tried to put the bike pass through. Um, our area from um, Arlington um, east to Genesee, we consider that a residential area. It's been called a collector street. I understand that, but we're residential. It's a small, tighter community. We, we all have about one acre lots there. And um, we like that. And so we're not looking at that turning into a highway, just like it is on Genesee. Um, so we have concerns with that also. Um, I did think that you know having access on Arlington and Washington Street are good ideas, but I can see their concerns too. They're smaller streets. They can't handle that much traffic either. So those are the things that I would just hope that this committee would consider, that we understand the development, we understand the reason for it, we need to generate you know, a large tax base, but just, just look at other areas instead of just jamming it to downtown and making it as busy, I hate to say it, as Oconomowoc, where you can't even get into the city anymore because it's too, it's too crowded, it's too busy, and it's not as enjoyable as downtown Delafield is. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else like to make comments? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hello. Um, Christine Tudorberg at 1323 McDowell Road. So we're basically adjacent to where... Can you repeat your address? Uh, 1323 McDowell Road. So Wisconsin and McDowell Cross we're one of two driveways on McDowell, and we've been in Delafield 25 years. Love it. Um, I walk all the time. Uh, having 34 houses plus an extra three, it's too many. Um, you're picking like our smallest lots that we have in the current neighborhood and recreating them over and over again. We have half acre lots. We have larger than that. We have um, a lot of different sizes, and to have that much traffic, to have our children playing and then having that much traffic, the roads are narrow, and if you get two people driving past each other and a walker, it doesn't fit. Someone's stopping, everybody's waiting, you go step on the grass because there's no room. So that's what's happening now, but to have that much extra traffic, it's too much. So. I don't like the idea of the pass through from Anderson. Um, it's just that it's such a small road to have that much traffic. And I just, I can't imagine, you know, all of those homes and the kids that play in the walkers and having that kind of traffic running through there. But I do think that 37 homes is just way too many for that area. So that's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else like to make comments? Come on up. Lori Sawall, S-A-W-A-L-L, -L, address 511 Wisconsin Avenue. As you can tell by the address, we're deeply impacted by this, being right on Wisconsin Avenue. And actually, I don't live there, but my 80-year-old mom lives there and it's a home that we purchased for her a number of years ago and have very much enjoyed her living in Delafield. And I guess the chief concern that my husband and I as the property owners have with this development, there's, there's two, and we understand development, that it's a, growth is a natural and change is a natural part of any community. 
Um, the concerns that I have, and I'm sure they've been, re this is a repetition, but nevertheless, it's our concern, is number one is the setbacks. The setbacks, you have 10 feet on the sides, you have 10 feet at the back, and you have 25 feet at the front. So you can have houses that are 20 feet apart. That's a concern. That's stacking houses like cordwood. The developer was very, very gracious to send us this beautiful, a beautiful um, pictures of other developments that they have. Not one of them has a front facing, or one has a front facing garage door. Um, we're looking at a community where you're going to have garage door after garage door after garage door after garage door, especially with lots that are 66 feet wide. Our lot is 66 feet wide but it has an 1,100 square foot house on it with a garage tucked behind. It's a very different feel than what the developer has proposed in terms of density or in terms of the usage of the lots, at least by the images, and also by the other developments that they've done. Um, the other, in, in addition to the setbacks, um, actually to finish up the setbacks, when you have lots that are, houses that are 20 feet apart, that's awfully close. I personally live up, live up on the ridge between Moose and Okachi Lake. That's how close our houses are up on the ridge. They're kind of stacked like cordwood up there. Why do we want to do this here? Why do we want to have houses that are 20 feet apart? That just seems silly when you're intentionally planning a community. In addition to the setbacks is the, den is the green space and the density of the project. From what I see in the, in the proposed development as it is now, the 37 lots, for green space, all I'm seeing is a walking path, some sidewalks, and some drainage dishes. When I looked at the sanctuary, which they were gracious enough to send us that that's another one of their developments, I actually asked my son, who is a professional in geomatic, um, information, um, geographical information systems, to see to, uh, to share with me how much green space is in the sanctuary, and it's 3.94 acres of green space in the sanctuary. The lot size there, the house minimum house distance apart are 27 feet apart. It's, you know, to give us those as examples and to give us these spacious looking distances between houses, that's not what they're proposing here. And that's a great, grave concern for this neighborhood and also for Delafield this little part of Delafield, this beautiful, charming, tree-lined part of Delafield. Let's preserve that as we move forward. Great, thank, thank you, you very much for your comments. Anybody else? Anybody else like to speak? Going once, going twice. Citizens' comments are now closed. Okay. We'll move on to number nine, unfinished business. Oh, great, thank you. A uh, 9A DLC 0782001001-1807 Nagawicka Road, owner Walker's Point Property LLC, J. Frank and David Hero. Applicant Peter Damsgaard, architect. Applicant seeks site plan and appearance approval to remodel the structures of the property and make improvements like a point of order Just over overall to the site all right come on up I think I give him a chance to leave <laughs> Okay, Doug, if you're going to keep talking, you got to get out of here. <laughs> Lots of room in the atrium. All right, go ahead. Am I <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Okay, so the applicant has been here um, for a couple meetings, and so I'm not going to go over this all over again, but they are here for formal site plan and appearance review. Um, they have received business plan of operation to continue operating the, the restaurant. Um, and then they have then come in and decided that they were going to do some significant remodeling. So that's why they need to get the site plan and appearance review um, approval. Just this last month, they did um, get the approval from Common Council at your recommendation to have the weather vane and um, cupolas exceed the height requirement. So that has been approved. Um, as part of the site plan or changes, and Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe mostly everything is the same. Maybe the um, copper roofing, did that change to a different color? That is correct. The copper roofing went to that aged bronze look due to availability and lead times. Uh, were there any other changes that I may have missed? I don't believe so. Um, okay. And then the other big thing is the stormwater management is still um, under review, but based on a... a preliminary review of they had they have done detailed engineering it's just um, our engineer was on vacation the, the last week but um, they are uh, proposing several measures in order to accommodate the drainage that currently goes toward the south which the Lake Welfare Committee has pointed out as a um, significant um, issue for for the lake and they they do want it to be resolved so the um, proposal will should um, significantly improve that that problem area a majority of the drainage does come from the parking lot and um, they have and i don't know our, is the engineer here can yep. probably explain what they have proposed better than i can so i'll give them that opportunity to do so um, as far as landscaping goes i think i will just quick go to this plan so they are removing many trees which they are seeing are mostly invasive or, or volunteer trees that have just grown on their own um, and then they will be planning a whole bunch more now I don't have a plan I don't believe I have a plan that says exactly the the inches that have been removed and what those species are in order to know whether or not mitigation is required for the tree removal um, however they are planning 134 trees on the site at a certain diameter so um, we will need to get that information from you and you the plan commission can decide whether or not you want me to do that review to make sure they don't need mitigation or if you want it to come back to you uh, but we will I will make sure that they uh, meet the mitigation requirements uh, the landscape plan is is very extensive uh, let's see if I can find that let's see this is easier they have a lot of trees, shrubs, um, ground cover. This is the, um, I'm not gonna get into all the different types of, of plantings, it was in the packet, but around the building there's, there's quite a bit of um, beautification that will take place there. And then uh, along the lot lines, they are um, stacking that again with, with the different varieties of, of height and vegetation. The entranceway to the building, is that whole entranceway pervious? pavers or is that just a brick only a portion is okay proposed. so a portion of this is pervious um, but the, you can see this is all tree lined and then they are proposing some uh, up lighting to to kind of shine up on the trees that's pretty minimal in illumination they have a few landscape islands again they didn't this was a huge parking lot before it will continue to be a large parking lot they need the parking spaces um, they're just over the required parking with the plan that they have proposed and um, so because it's an existing situation you don't necessarily need to require the islands in between and then even if you did you have the option to allow the perimeter landscaping either way and this is i would say for a lot of plans that that we review this is a pretty dense plan um, in fact i would want to have our landscape architect do a quick review to make sure it's not too too dense i mean we want to make sure this stuff can survive um one comment that that i guess was brought up from the engineer is how is this a drive that you um come up to and and, and come up to the building and then is it a one-way traffic it's intended to be one way okay Correct. he had said it's going to be too narrow for two-way traffic and if and was wondering if parking spaces should be removed but if that's your 
flow pattern, um, that's probably sufficient, to, well, depending on the plan commission's consideration. That's basically the same pr footprint that's there now, right? Yep, it, exactly. It's the existing condition. We're not modifying oh, okay. the width uh, or the, the uh, how far the canopy extends out. Okay. Um, and then, and let me know if you want to see any of the other improvements. We've there, they were in the packet from the last meeting. This is part of the lighting plan, the photometric. Um, they'll meet the, uh, <clears throat> the lighting requirements of the ordinance. Um, there's, you know, again, the um, lighting along the trees. There's um, chandelier type lighting under the pavilion, which are these lights under the rooftop here. Um, they have some lighting in the sidewalk, which is um, an existing, Im will be improved walkway um, they have some lantern style wall lighting uh, some recessed lighting attached to those walls and walkways uh, that that will be really minimal just so people can see where they're going and then uh, some 19 inch tall path lighting so those are just on little yeah. little poles signage they are going to be coming back for signage uh, so we'll see them again and let's see is there anything else um, based on all of this in your past review and, and comments that were submitted to the applicant uh, we do recommend approval i would like you to consider whether or not this should go to public works because of the stormwater management that is being proposed uh, they do need a stormwater and erosion control permit they have uh, submitted a stormwater maintenance agreement already so that will need to be um, once the stormwater permit is good and we know the plans are final then the stormwater maintenance agreement can go to common council for review and approval uh, then i do recommend that staff just approve the landscape plan one final time to make sure the species and densities are appropriate and and then they, we also have to review that tree removal plan to make sure they don't need tree mitigation and then no signage is permitted until they get a permit or submit an application for that so I have a quick question on the north property line into the south property line. Uh, are you intending to, or do you have a need to take down any healthy, valuable trees? Um, in order to get that bioretention pond on the south, um, we will have to remove some trees. Uh, like staff mentioned, um, they are not uh, heritage trees. They're more, I'll use the term junk trees. Yeah. Um, but we do intend on replacing so they're, that. They're not high quality. They're not oaks. You're not cutting down any oaks. You're not cutting down any maples. You're, it's mostly, are there any valuable trees in there? Bo I mean, I don't count box elders, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to get some facts from you so we need whether we got to do a tree inventory yeah. on you or not. Um, Rob Williams with Ari Smith. Uh, we're the landscape architects. It's um, mostly black walnut. Um, uh, some old like junipers and arborvita um, so we'll, we'll do the tree inventory and make sure okay. that there's nothing in there that we missed in our you know first site visit but um, and if there is we'll we'll try to save it because there's some work around well yeah but I, I can only assume that based on the landscape plan I reviewed you're gonna have more than enough caliber inches to replace the few relatively small diameter trees you might have to take down yeah. and then a uh, second question I had was uh, Amy can you go to the lighting page if you wouldn't mind sure um, you know you have the classic carriage lights and on the lakeside in particular um, you know when this the, lake, the actual fixtures when the Lake Welfare Committee talks about boathouses and things they're always asking for downward li downward lighting as opposed to that carriage spread the light because the light travels such a distance over the water. Uh, would you be willing to consider downward lighting in those situations? Is this all you're putting down by the water? Correct. Is I don't believe we have any of the lanterns. What, what about the, one, the, the ones up just above there? Those I don't believe we have any uh, position. Those right there. Where, the where are those going? These? Yeah. are on the main build the building right not, the building. not down by the water there those are on the uh, primarily on the east side of the building so not facing the lake not facing the lake correct okay are there any face in the lake I if they are change them to down <laughs> lighting. I don't believe so. 
I think we might have one by the door on the lower level, um, but we would consider an alternative. If yeah. On the leak side, just question. I'd, I'd ask that you make it downward lighting if you need it. Sure. You mentioned that the entrance has is one-way traffic coming in on that brick. Uh, the the drive aisle from the street up mm -hmm. to the building is two-way, and then you okay. have the opportunity to make a right or a left okay. to go into the parking, or one way around the yeah, the drop-off. I thought you said it was a one-way in, so yeah. that would be it. I think because that would confuse people. Yeah. So thanks for clarifying. No problem. Seems like it's going to be challenging with your dumpster location, getting a truck in there. Are these the smaller rollout dumpsters? Because I can't see how a truck could back up to that. Yeah, uh, you're correct. We'll be using the smaller rollout. So we're actually expanding the, the footprint a little bit of that fenced area to allow for the dumpsters to work appropriately. Um, there's a drive lane that allows the truck to pull right up to the gate, and then the, the um, driver will get out, roll the dumpster okay. out, and put it in. Then it works. It sure. So I guess I, looking at the stormwater management plan, I personally I was impressed. Um, so I'm going to do a couple things. One is I'm going to put it on the agenda for Lake Welfare to to make sure that they under, ex, understand everything that was put in here. Not that there's going to be I don't think any objections, but um, one of the things that we were looking for also was the opportunity to maybe improve some areas. So and this was one of them. So we'll take a look at that and see if we can even add to what's going on further downstream. Um, ironically, I guess, maybe coincidentally, I think on page 83, when you look at the <coughs> outflow of where the stormwater retention will go, there's two properties to the south. That person is on Lake Welfare, and she's thrilled about what you're doing. So I think you know, we're pretty impressed with what we've seen, at least from that perspective. Thank you. Mike, do you know when the next Lake Welfare meeting is? Uh, two weeks from tonight. <clears throat> Mike, did you ask that something be? <coughs> did you ask that something be held off till nope, Lake Welfare? Nope, okay. not at all. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the opportunity to add to what they're doing. Okay. Because I think we're going and to other add. properties nearby? Yeah, we're thrilled oh, okay. about because it is a real problem area. And the fact that they're taking on, I think, the brunt of it, and we're going to look to see if there's anything else we can add to it or augment, because this was a problem area. So we're kind of thrilled about it. We're looking to help. Any other questions or suggestions or requests? Dan, do you need this to go to Public Works? I've been kicking that one around. <laughs> Next week, Wednesday, I mean, we're, Tom is soliciting for a quorum right now. I'm not so sure we're going to be there, which would then put us into the August meeting. Um, I don't know if that sets you back. Uh, yeah. We would like to start some site work. I'm somewhat comfortable if that stormwater management is looked at by the city engineer. We'll continue. To me, that's the concern here is... Contingent on city engineer meets our two ten one hundred requirements, and I'd be fine with that. Is, it, is that part of the, um, the 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 control permit that's issued? Is that review? Yeah, so Should I can be, tell you yeah. what I have in my report. No, I know, that's what I'm asking. I'm not the I'm not the engineer here, but they they have to get a stormwater permit and they'll have to um, record a maintenance agreement. But per the ordinance, because this is a redevelopment site. Um, and by the way, they're reducing the overall impervious surface by about 10,000 square feet. So there will be less than there is now. But um, they have to uh, reduce the total suspended solids by 40%. And with the proposed improvements, they will be reducing it by about 65.9%, which is above the requirements. And then the stormwater report also shows reduced peak flow runoff rates um, and a positive impact to the drainage area. So they have to do their detailed review. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, but that's their preliminary analysis, if that helps at all. All right, I'm, I'm willing to make a motion to approve the uh, uh, site review. 
uh, based on the applicant's request. Uh, conditioned on a stormwater and erosion control permit to be issued and that the landscape plan be reviewed by city plan, uh, city staff and as well as the tree removal plan and possible tree mitigation requirements are met by city staff as well and um, that signage come back to us in the future and that um, if any lighting on the lakeside is not downward lit that it come back to Land Commission for approval. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? We have a second. I thought it was actually. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions passes. Thank you. When do you think you'll get started? ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, we will move on to 9B, DLC 0798953, Genesee Street, owner Michelle Kelly, applicant Michelle and Michael Kelly, applicant seeks feedback and scheduling a public hearing for a rezone <coughs> from the R3 single and two family residential to the CBD4 central business district and the planned development, conditional use permit, general development plan to accommodate a dentist's office, a site plan and appearance review will be part of the consideration following a public hearing for the above matters. Welcome back. <laughs> how's, how's it going? <laughs> hey, it's his first time being the applicant. So. Yeah. I feel comfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> Need the mic. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So the this area, this property in particular, um, just went through a process and the Common Council in June did amend the land use plan to central business. Uh, and created a new zoning district called CBD4, which is intended for these gateway areas into downtown. So now the applicant is proposing to rezone this property to that new zoning district, which has been um, enacted, the CBD4 district. He is also proposing a conditional use. I do want the plan commission to consider whether or not it is on the agenda that you can schedule a public hearing. Um, we are missing the um, a <coughs> landscape plan and stormwater management plan. However, um, we had a little miscommunication between the applicant and I because this is a um, previous plan that was submitted with the application, but and it does not include the landscaping along the north lot line or stormwater management facilities. But the applicant informed me that he is still going with the site plan, and I'll show it to you that was submitted to you for concept review um, several months ago now. Um, which All right, does, that was my number one question. Is the plan in the packet right? Yeah, so it's the, <laughs> it, the plan that they're pursuing is the plan with the building pushed closer to Genesee Street with the parking on the south side um, along Poplar Path. Um, when this was originally submitted, the engineering staff did say that we need to look at that stormwater management facility probably can't be in that in that corner. So um, we are going, the engineer and I will be meeting with the applicant and his, um, what do you call them, contractors, engineer, engineer and architect um, in the next week to go over all of the details because we are missing um, the detailed landscape plan and um, again the stormwater management stuff. But the building will be three, so my report is based on the other plan, so there's going to be some missing information. Um, it will be 3,350 square feet as part of, it's a one-story building. Um, they, and the uh, elevation renderings are included in the packet. I can, I'll bring those up as needed. They are proposing uh, 21 parking stalls. I think in here somewhere it says 23, but I could only count 21, so I, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but they only need 14 stalls and so they have sufficient parking for the dental i should say dental operation that they are proposing um, which is a use that is allowed in that cbd4 district again any any change to the cbd4 <coughs> district requires that plan development conditional use as well and that's where you can use your discretion to put um, you know the restrictions on based on compatibility with the neighborhood um, other than that, I think, so the CBD4 district, just as a reminder, has a 10-foot front yard setback, a 10-foot side yard setback, a 30-foot corner yard, and a 10-foot uh, rear yard. 
and we do need to before the next meeting one thing we're going to be talking about talking to the applicant about is they need to have a survey done that shows the um, right-of-way of Genesee Street accurately this may not be an, an accurate it, they should be fine because they only have um, they have a minimal setback but uh, we do need to make sure that that is correct that impacts the stormwater facilities um, and then you know the, the corner where they can put the signage and then we'll have to identify the vision corner easement area as well um, but access would come off a of poplar path that they're showing a gray area going to the north that's just reserved for you know a potential expansion if that property to the north of theirs is used for commercial purposes in the future they do own it it is currently going to remain a residential um, am I missing anything Mike that you want to add I can go to the building renderings are probably what you want to look at yeah I guess the big th the big thing is you know we've left the area open to which was discussed in the past that kind of caused some problems with if there was future access needed to get it behind any of those other properties so we've left plenty, plenty of room there if that was needed in the future. Um, I know some concerns were, you know, people were questioning if we had access underneath those power lines, and that's all been cleared through with ATC. They have granted all that access for power utilities underneath, mm -hmm. um, as long as there's no trees. They don't want any trees planted underneath there, obviously, for maintenance-wise. Um, as far as that, I don't, I mean, we've gone over this several times. So I don't know if anyone else has any. It's January. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to celebrate all the holidays here together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. If, if there weren't uh, anything to be going in behind that alleyway that was discussed, would you prefer the building to be moved back away from the street, or would you still um, put it closer to the street? Well, the last, some of the discussions, yeah, we've everyone kind of already... wanted it closer hmm. to Genesee. Yeah. yeah. So if, if nothing's going in, we just leave it green, okay. and we could landscape it and put trees and whatnot in there. Mm -hmm. Just... Uh, yeah. Make it look nice. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. Is is there are the do, would the power lines preclude you from putting in any kind of tree? Is that the city right away between the road between uh, Poplar Path and the, the black line, line is the right. That's of the right away. Okay. And then that's I, just that's there's nothing there right now, is there? There's no, no trees. It's just all empty. So like something that be I'd be interested to see. You've got a little bit of space to work with, or maybe even you, you could work with the city. But I, I'd be interested to see what kind of um, a uh, couple of nice trees, kind of, a, kind of some shielding, because that's that is like right. Mm -hmm. You're coming off the freeway into Delfield. Like, hey, welcome to Delfield. Here's our parking lot. So, I mean, something to to buffer that a little bit. Whatever kind of it, it could be bushes. I mean, just something that would be. Uh, no, our, something our, on your landscaping plan to shield the parking lot. Our intentions are to shield. <clears throat> the property on the east side too with trees where it doesn't show the trees okay. at least we want to put the trees there as well but i, I know i know you're and going for the like the the specific implementation plan i'm assuming that would be part of that would be the well landscaping so we or, it's up to you if you want to um i'm comfortable with doing both but i'm just okay may, we might end up deferring something on the landscaping approval if you don't have I mean, because we're going to, whatever. Like no, I said, that's, that's it's a pretty high profile piece of property um, when no, you're entering the pro property. I think I think it's better than the what was there, <laughs> which was what nothing, right? Yeah, and I would recommend yeah. that you, if you schedule the public hearing for the conditional use, that you do it at that staff, put it on the agenda at such time he has submitted a landscape plan. Um, yeah. It, it is a requirement for even a general development plan to have a draft landscape plan and I know that was a comment that the neighbors had to with the north property so mm -hmm. um, I think they can, they'll be able to come up with something pretty quickly yeah I know when we sit down uh, when we meet with yourself next week we can go over what you guys would like to see as far as landscape you know any additional trees you'd like to have put in um, that's that's not a problem at all yeah I'm so that's, my, that's the only concern I, yeah, I have. The my big voice thing is, to, it's it's to make it not look like a, you know, there's going to be cars there, but I mean not look like a parking lot. Make yeah, it yeah. Like the big the big concern you have is with the power lines, you got 35 feet. No, I know. I so, don't know what's available. I don't know what's available. I have no idea. There's what, room. Yeah, okay. There's room to do it. Okay. Yeah. I have one question. Um, is there any plan for a path, a path popular path um, to go to Stocks Drive and all that? 
I was actually told that there is, so we'll have to look into that as part of um, your submittal for the next application. Is that, yes, there, is. there is. I didn't recall that. I'm pretty that. certain we put one on the north side, oh. and it's supposed to continue all the way east. Right. A path uh -huh. through the property? No, uh, no just it would be in the way. city right away. Yeah. Okay. But I'm pretty certain there's one plan. We're real big into connecting all the a neighborhoods path or a to sidewalk. downtown. Yeah. Either. Okay. I think it was path. But it's understand that you would, if, if right. it's, five foot. it may be a yeah. requirement that you put it in as part of your development. Ah, okay. Uh, Good is catch, like Laura. Sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that what you're talking yeah. about, sidewalk? Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. not. Okay. That's the least of my concerns. <laughs> Yeah, as always, this looks good. Yeah. I think it's yeah, going to be really a welcome big. addition for that corner. Yeah, it's been Clean vacant up. for so long. Yeah. Oh, it looks good. Since I've lived here. So, Amy, we just need to um, schedule a public hearing or a CVD-4. Um, no, mm -hmm. Contingent on, on receipt of... Yeah. You can schedule the items. hearing for the rezone because he does need the re rezone for the CVD-4. If you... If you schedule the public hearing for the CU, I would make it contingent upon the submittal of a landscape plan and um, anything else and more detailed stormwater. It, he only needs a concept plan at this point, but um, I think we need a little. We need some numbers behind it so the engineers can say that it's sized appropriately. Okay. Question for you, Dan. Mm -hmm. On that property um, down on the bottom of the corner where that shows like a signage area in the bottom is it south? That'd be a south west part. Yeah. And then there's also on the northwest corner, there's giant drainage grates. Oh. What, I mean, would that be something that could be tied into the drainage or stormwater? What's that for? Um, <laughs> I think that went in when Genesee Street was redone many years ago. And I think it flows south. It should be in the city right away. You still have to meet requirements Correct. before something goes in there. That's my understanding. So my court would be able to answer that okay. question. Yeah, I was just curious every time I look at them. No, it's something to consider whether you can tie a couple years or... into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan, does this need to go to Public Works or any other committees? Have you been to Public Works on this one? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. I'll visit no. that one too. <laughs> Make um, the he loves going to these meetings. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself when this is done. <laughs> I think since there's a sidewalk, we could bring you to Parks and Rec, too, if you want to. <laughs> 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 Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah, it no. should come to public. Should? Yeah. yeah. Um, after they because have Because we're talking about the path, too, and, okay. and stormwater. After they have some civil plans put together? Yep. Could it possibly, since you're talking about the path, is it something that could be done at the time of construction to make sure it's just done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that would come back and rip stuff up? Sure. Absolutely. That'd yeah. be that would be preferred. Prefer. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so are we looking for a public hearing at the next? Yeah, meeting? definitely for the like rezone, the, and then the he needs to get some the some side more the information for the CU, but you can, no, you that's can all let we need. me schedule it when he does it. So that'd be July. So I'll make a motion to schedule a public hearing uh, for this subject property for our meeting in July. For the rezone, for the rezone <laughs> to CBD four. Sorry. Sweet. Yeah, I'll Perfect. second that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Any discussion? Are we not including? It's just for the rezone. Just the rezone. Skip the CU altogether for now. Like a potential. Oh, I think he's going to do a different motion probably. for that. Are we going to be ready for conditional use? Well, I don't know. We have a motion on the table. Yeah, let's do that. So yeah, probably right now, but it'll probably do the reason. So is there any discussion? Do you, are you clear with what the motion is? To schedule the rezone for July 27th. Yeah, public so hearing. From the two-family residential to the CBD4 business district. Yeah. Got so, it. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. All right, I'll make a motion to schedule a conditional use permit um, uh, public hearing for July 27th, and if the applicant isn't ready, to, we can always kick it down the road. 
Is that so, something? Is that something yeah. we would tie in a landscape yeah. plan? Need a second. Yeah, I'll second I'll that also. Okay. Question: Is that something we would tie a landscape plan in with also, or no? If, I'll just make sure it's a complete application yeah. that he meets okay. the application requirements. Yeah. We're all clear on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So You're good? I have. Um, to schedule the public hearing for July 27th or when the application is complete for the PU plan development conditional use permit, GDP. Is that accurate? Yep. Yep. Wonderful. And then, sorry, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> for the first uh, motion, did Bob, did you I have the? I seconded that. Okay. So for both. Okay. I had you. I just wanted to confirm. Thank you so much. Sounds good. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. We're getting there. All right. Am Another free? step. Am I free for the night? Another step. Yeah. One more. You're welcome. Another hurdle over. 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 Another hurdle Okay, we'll move on to number 10, new business. Uh, 10A, DLC 0786078002, 1935 West Shore Drive, owner, applicant Dean Safensky. And, okay, and Ann, <laughs> Stefan Chuck, okay, there's a P word in there somehow. Applicant seeks site plan and appearance approval for the construction of a retaining walls within the setbacks. If you give us your names and addresses. It's Dean and Ann Stefanczyk, S-T-E-F-A-N-C-Z-Y-K, 1935 West Shore Drive. Thank you. And Amy, you want to give us an overview, please? Sure. Um, and Scott's going to help me with this one today, I think. Um, so the, the subject property is on West Shore Drive. It's on the... Um, west side of Lake Nagawica um, on the west side of the road. So not does not have sh shore frontage. Mm -hmm. um, so the applicants did get a permit for a new home and that home has been constructed. The property does have some pretty steep slopes on the, on the west side. Mm -hmm. um, they did as part of the home construction, hold on one second. Um, they did receive approval to construct some retaining walls. Sorry, this is not the plan with the approved ones, but, but it's close. So they did get approval, but the approval for the walls did comply with the ordinance requirements, which all walls were um, less than three feet in height and met the setbacks and offsets. And there was no retaining wall proposed on the roadside. So you can see this L-shaped wall that wasn't part of the permit. Um, so that was issued during construction after they constructed the walls it was determined that the walls in the back of the property did exceed three feet in height they range between 34 inches 34 and a half inches to 37 and a half inches and then um, the retaining wall on the south side of the property does meet the eight foot setback the retaining walls on the north side of the property are four inches where eight feet is required um, and then the retaining wall on the roadside is nine feet from the right of way, whereas um, 25 feet is required. Uh, it does meet the height requirement. So anything that doesn't meet the setbacks or the height needs to come to plan commission for approval. It's not that it's prohibited and requires a variance. It does need your approval. <clears throat> and then there's also steep slopes, um, slopes that exceed four to one. Um, the ordinance does require preservation of these areas. Um, with this particular property, they are, with this project, they're lessening the slope, and they also received, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Scott, but many years ago, they received a certified survey map, and as part of that process, there was some activity that took place um, that created the slopes. Is that, Scott, is that, is that right? The city approved the CSM. Da also uh, just a second. I don't think you have a mic, correct? Yeah. Dan, would you share your mic, please? The city approved a CSM, I believe in 1998, that also included a grading plan. So it was acknowledged by plan commission and, and council. And that grading plan included steep slopes, approximately two to one. So I actually have that in the packet there. That. Oh, yeah, the certified survey map. Yeah. I can, I'll find it as we go through this. So in the plan commission's review, 
you need to be looking at um, if it's in the side yard setback the difference in the grade is better controlled by a retaining wall in the front setback the terrain makes the slope to the road um, impractical and plans that indicate the wall is structurally sound and constructed so that it will be properly contained and support the ground pavement walks and nearby structures and the location and height shall be harmonious with the principal structure and the retaining walls need to be kept and maintained in good sound and presentable condition um, and notification needs to be sent to all of the adjacent properties. Um, we do have, if you went through the packet, mm -hmm. they have several letters of support. Yeah. Um, the people in the back of the property, I'm just gonna slowly go through this packet if you can just give me a minute. Um, oh, here's the certified survey map that was approved with the steep slopes. And then, Here's a bunch of letters of support. I'm trying to get to a picture. Um, so these are all letters of, okay. So here's the rear property line. This person does support the project in that it's, um, they feel that it's a safer condition um, and it's lessening that steep slope. And then. <clears throat> Is that two tiered? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, oh, there and it is. Both. Yeah. Uh, well, one of them is definitely over three feet. The other one is um, yeah. close to the measurements are in the packet. So here's a picture of the roadside retaining wall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> here's another picture of it. So apparently they put this wall in to help control the drainage. It's pretty flat out here, but. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying flattening out this yard has prevented water from draining over the road and onto the adjacent property. And the adjacent property has said that it has improved the drainage on their property. So, um, and here's just, there's a bunch of uh, zoomed in pictures of it. And the, the, the rain one that you just passed, mm -hmm. um, we tried to take a shot just to show that there was no runoff into the road as there used to be, just mm -hmm. to really show the containment. This a lot, when we purchased a lot, it was, just had a two, uh, three car garage on it, and it was mostly gravel and then the sleep, steep slopes coming up the back and the north side, <clears throat> and the water would just run straight off of that yeah. into our neighbor's yards and would pool up in their yard. So one of our concerns was to help deal with that. Yeah. I mean, that's why we flattened out the front yard as much as we could. We put the tiers in the back to help, you know, give yeah. flat surfaces for, th for things to drain into. So we're concerned about the neighbors. It looks, it looks very nice. Um, and then I just want to point out, not to interrupt, because I didn't have time to pass this around before the meeting. They did get one more letter of support, and mm -hmm. then they did get a letter from an engineer stating that the walls um, were installed in a stable manner. I don't know if you want to pass these around. So I, I could talk about the reason we ended up in the, just take the setback on the north side. You, you saw for a moment the, the grading the diagram with the, from the um, 1998 oh, approved sorry. plan. That it was, it was very steep on the north side as well. And the neighbor on the north <coughs> complained that he thought um, the previous owner had like dug into his property. So part of what we did is try to put some back there as we we're grading stuff. And that's why that retaining wall moved to that side so that we could deal with the slope there instead of trying to build fill in, you know, and, and then try to build a retaining wall on the fill didn't seem as stable. It just, that, honestly, my builder didn't catch it. And I didn't realize that the retaining wall was gonna be out of compliance in my backyard. Since it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a structure. I don't, I mean, that's the way I took it was just a retaining wall. And if you look down around my neighborhood, there's just retaining walls all over the place. They're close to the road, they're far, from, you know, they're just, they're taller, they're, there's. Different materials. It's an eclectic neighborhood and I really like that. But when we decided to do, when we were doing the grading in the front yard, I'm like, oh, this slope is a little steep. I'd like to pick this up. So we just, it was kind of an afterthought. I didn't even, I should have come <coughs> to the city and said, hey, I want to do this thing. But looking at the condition around me, it didn't even enter my mind that that was going to be an issue. Which, I'm sorry, I messed up. But. So, so there's I, several pictures in the packet of retaining walls close to the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. 
if yeah. you took a had a chance to look right. at them. Some better looking yeah. than others. And I did. I talked to all the neighbors that surround me. That's what a lot of packet is. Yes. The the one that is impacted the most is one of the neighbors that said he's he's okay with yeah. the, that being that close to his property line. Yes. It's Carl's. Carl Dunkovich. So I. I'm hopeful that you'll approve this because, you know, the grass is starting to grow and I don't <laughs> tear stuff up. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to say I'm, I'm appreciative of the fact you, I mean, you documented things really well with the, yeah. the other non-conforming walls near the road. And, and that, it doesn't mean we should proliferate it, but um, yours isn't any better or worse than mm -hmm. some of the other ones. And there's the one, the cement one looks like it's been there for like 50 years. Yeah. Um, that might pre predate our zoning, but um, uh, I don't know. Scott, did you did were, did you go? Were you on site to inspect the back wall, like the retaining walls and back? As far as I mean, he's got a letter from an engineer, but I'm that's that's probably my main concern is the integrity of those walls. And I did not inspect them while they were being constructed. I, Dean, didn't they go in in the first year or so? Yeah, they've been there for like two years. They were the first thing that went in to deal with the site. You know, manipulating the materials on the site, and that's, I mean, all the stone that's in it is from the site. Wow. Because they're digging up our foundation. Oh my foundation. God! Really? And, oh, wow. yeah. yeah. I thought you trucked that in. No, none of that's trucked in. It's all from the oh site. Oh my lord! And yes, my neighbor, my neighbor took about half as much as that and landscaped his stuff with that. And all our neighbors, I just told them all to take whatever they wanted, <laughs> and they loaded up. They loaded up their cars and they. And we have somewhere. more. So if not a lot more though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the glacier and stopped. And I have to say too, I mean, a lot of times we see um, an, a letter from wow. neighbors, and that weighs heavily, right? I mean, and when people have something that's too close or too far, um, or whatever, um, and it wasn't a form letter. I mean, you had these were handwritten letters and other other things, right. but um, uh, anyway, so that's. That, the one neighbor that, that did not comment, comment just for transparency is the south neighbor, I believe. No, that's the one. Did that, they? That's the one that he just yeah. got to me late. Okay, so, so that's he's in one there of too. the letters there, there that got dropped There is one neighbor off. who I, I know he walks his dogs past us. It's on the back side of the property. The picture you saw was directly back, and then there's a neighbor that's got maybe four feet on my property line, which I just haven't been able to get a hold of him. Yeah. But I know I know that fact that he likes it, but whatever that's worth. Wow. So there, I, I am aware of a neighbor or two that are further down the street that have had some concerns. Yeah. Um, just so you're aware of that. Uh, the height of the walls, is there, this is a question, I guess, in general, is there an issue of safety? I, don't so think is it different from any other retaining walls? I guess I'm not well, sure. I don't. I don't think in comparison to any other retaining wall that there would be an issue with okay. with safety. And you know, we're not done. You know, landscaping because okay. we've okay. not even been in there for a year. Um, I'm sure there's a Scott can maybe help us, but I'm sure there's a height limit for retaining walls that does have something to do with safety. Yeah. H how that's all arrived at, I, I don't know the math or the logic behind it but but, but for these it's 36 inches right which I, I mean I like to be fair I've measured everywhere and that's in my packet I have there's a couple places that are a little bit but all I have to do is you know throw some more dirt on stuff yeah, settles really, out a little bit really so I'm just trying to be fair you, you know as, this is the true condition <laughs> and I'll, I'll mitigate that so it'll be inside the the three foot range and Scott when you're measuring you measure just at the top of the 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 beam or that top rock that we see up there that's sitting on the top? I measure to <laughs> the, the bottom grade up to, yeah, the top. The, the, the top rock that we see there? Because that's popped but, up close. Well, probably the frame. Okay, the frame. So if you were three inches over and you added three inches of dirt, you'd be in compliance. Yeah. Correct. It, that, yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of regrading a little bit, I think. No, I just, I just want to say to the board, first of all, thank you, of course, but Anybody that knows that neighborhood, of course, it's very eclectic. And that property was really difficult. It was a difficult property to work with, and we knew that going into it, that it was going to be a challenge. We didn't really know how big of a challenge it was going to be, but, you know, <laughs> glacially, it, yeah. it, was, it was a former riverbed. 
So that is why there is all of the river rock. But that is also, you know, means that it takes time to develop and, and reestablish the, the topsoil, but the subsoil is still all rock. It's approximately 67% rock. So we did use all the materials that were available on that property. We withheld the integrity of what was there naturally. And we didn't, we brought nothing in. We brought nothing from the outside in other than the gabions, which are the cages that hold the rock. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think, you know, I think we did a good job with what we had. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I can address these other two smaller points about the grade, where there's a grade between the two gabions that's a little bit steeper than the four to one, even though originally it was like, ridiculously steep. We're going to be planting in there, and I'm going to have a material from that, and I'm going to use that to do the final grade in there, instead of having to haul stuff in mm -hmm. to you know do more of that. That was the plan there. And wow. the back area behind the back avian, where you can see this grass in there, there's a deer trail that runs through there, and we see like 12 deer every morning and night mm -hmm. go past. Mm -hmm. So I, we don't want to like devegetate that totally. What we're trying to do is put in plants and slowly supplant it with natural plants native native Na plants. native native plants and see what what gets tolerated there and so it's a slower transition so it's not a shock to the you know nature and we've added a lot more trees than were originally on the property um, I've planted seven you know, I, I have 13 arborvitas <laughs> to the uh, to the north and that was per the neighbor's request to the north and um, there's uh, a lot of pine trees and I've been experimenting to see what the deer were going to eat or not eat so that's been a little bit of work in progress I did submit a list of all the plants that I actually purchased and planted not all of them survived but I have been absolutely trying to to determine what's going to survive in that area in that is that the list, yes. Amy? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, dear, dear love, I've arborvitae, by the way. It's like dessert. <laughs> and they haven't sana. they haven't been too bad. They said, they also one, love tulips. There's one they kind and that they don't over like, my, though. They stand on my patio and eat it over my oh. grill. But um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll make a motion to approve the the um, the 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 um, height and setbacks of the retaining walls pending um, just contingent upon our building inspector and city engineer to do a inspection for integrity and safety and, sure. and handle any issues they may bring up. Okay. I'll second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. We will move on to 10B, DELC 0792990. Oakwood Drive and DELC 0793997. Owner Hendricks Commercial Properties LLC. Applicant John Kemman, Hendricks Commercial Properties <coughs> LLC. Applicant seeks feedback on the conceptual presentation of the proposed single family residential planned unit development on the former St. John's Military Academy golf course. Welcome back. Thank you. Amy, want to give us an overview? Um. Okay, so the, the land use category for the property is institutional, and the property is currently zoned RE1. Um, hold on a sec here. I've got my files a little goofed up. Uh, maybe taking a step back, we should talk about the, the land use focus group project. So I'm just going to zoom in. So about a year, has it been a year, a year ago, um, the, the city had a, a group of residents come up with ideas for uh, smart growth in the city, responsible growth. This area was identified. Um, I think the city at large knew that, that Hendricks had purchased the property and it might be um, utilized for future development. So as part of that group, completely unrelated to any requests of Hendricks, I, I don't believe they had any plans at the time, 
Um, the group had recommended high density residential in the area where I don't want to blend the two applications, but as just part of this part, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, the part where Miller Marriott is proposing their development, Beacon Hill, um, that was recommended for high density residential. And then there's a triangular piece, um, I guess it's not in, well, yeah, south of Exeter Street was also in high density residential. And that high density residential even extended westward onto the south side of the, um, what you could call the golf course property. So the city does require the, um, Preservation of environmental corridor. Uh, that's me. Sorry, that's happened uh, one other time. Um, they do require the preservation of environmental corridor on the very south end of this site. You will there is upland and, and wetland corridor, um, or you can develop. You have to preserve it as part of a uh, PUD, or you can develop it at one unit per five acre. So when we're talking about um, densities and lot sizes, just keep in mind that environmental corridor does come at a little bit of a uh, is weighted a little bit differently than the rest. Um, and then the focus group did recommend uh, 20,000 square foot lot size or density in the area designated in green, which is a majority of the golf course, um, with a some variable width vegetative buffer uh, on the west side. That was primarily proposed from the focus group understanding that the overall density of this site would be reduced to a half acre versus the one acre. Um, they did feel that it was important that the green area be developed as a plan unit development where there was some open space um, allowing the smaller lot sizes with um, some open space surrounding the development. Uh, so that, just to give you an idea of that, I, there were some comments um, regarding density on, on this site, in generally speaking. The, the focus group, and you can go back and, and listen to the videos as can the public, um, felt that this was a really nice, there's minimal areas available adjacent to the downtown area where um, density can be created, um, and that this was a great location that is still walkable to downtown to uh, provide that opportunity um, to get people downtown uh, living and to also occupy those, um, the uh, commercial buildings uh, that they can walk to. So it would be supportive of the downtown commercial community as well as um, provide them the, the residential use. Any questions regarding the focus group recommendations? The applicant's request is a little bit different than, than that, so I just wanted to point that out. The applicant is trying to stay, um, <coughs> st stick with the one acre density as, as much as they can. Uh, the, again, the recommendation was half acre. Um, as you, as we go through the density calculations, and it gets fairly complicated, the, um, if you look at the upland residential area, uh, they have 40, 46 lots would be allowed if you did, let's go to, hold on. There you go. Okay, if we did not include this sports area, the block in the middle, they would be allowed 46 units at one acre density and using one unit per five acre in the upland environmental corridor. They don't get credit for the wetland. So they do need the additional land in order to get to 50 lots that they're proposing, so the four additional lots. Uh, that is something that we're gonna, that the plan commission needs to talk about because the Open space per the ordinance does not need to be commonly owned. Um, I think that was mentioned from the public. It can be in private ownership. So as it is, the applicant is proposing to uh, put parts of each individual lot in permanent open space easements or, or some form of restriction, which the ordinance does allow that they be placed in an easement. And then also utilize um, these outlots that are sporadically placed um, with stormwater facilities. So that gets them, Josh, I believe, as far as open space goes, that mo they mostly meet their open minimum open space requirements without this field. Um, there's a little adjustment that needs to be made because they gave the development full credit 
um, for the wetland. So with open space, you can't use wetlands for density, but you can use 20% of the wetland for open space. They used all of the wetlands, so they're going to lose a little acreage there. So there's this combination of open space is pretty close, not using, not including this field system at all. Um, whereas the number of lots would need to be reduced by four if they didn't use it. A question came up about um, well, what happens when that, those tracks aren't used anymore from the school. That is something we deal with all of the time. That has to be, com you know, it has to be put in an ownership that can't be further developed and that's restricted through the subdivision plat, the developer's agreement, the, you know, any kind of restrictions. There's a lot of different ways to make sure that doesn't happen, um, you know, with and then it would also be a requirement of the development itself, the PUD. So in order to change something like that, they would need to come in, probably amend the zoning, the land use plan, the PUD, and, and modify the subdivision plat. And when you have a restriction on a subdivision plat, you'll, you have to actually get the um, signature of all of the lot owners too. So it'd be very, you know, very challenging for them to manipulate that in the future. So the big question for the plan commission is the code is a little unclear on whether or not you we can use this big square. Um, it says that school sites can't be part of the common open space, but when it actually refers to the amount of open space that's required for a development, it does not say that it needs to be common. In fact, it says open space that can be in public or private ownership. Um, and there's a conflict between like common open spaces, you can't use pub future public roads, but if you go into the open space provision, the minimum you have to have, it says you can include the public road. So there's, um, I'm not sure that you've ever had a, pro a subdivision come in with a school, you know, part of a school site. And talking to the engineers here, Josh, um, I, it's my understanding that they can probably, if you stick with the RE1 zoning and, and um, want to have the one acre density be met, they can probably clip out areas of the field. Am I speaking out of turn? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, so I think the, the question is, there's edges on the field um, that are just kind of passive open space. Do they become part of this project? And I. I don't know that that's what we're, we're looking at right now. Well, we are because um, we need to give you a path forward yeah. and yeah. The, land, the land use category that they go to and the zoning that they go to is dependent on this because right now the intent was to go to low density residential and stick with the RE1, which is the one acre, which requires one acre density. So if they can't use the park, to meet the one acre density, they need to rezone it to something different, which is also another option if you're supportive of their proposal as it's done. The focus group recommended half acre lots. Now you've heard you know, quite a bit of public comment tonight, but um, so they could either pursue a PUD at RE1 and we have to determine what can be used for this open space area or they modify the zoning to a different district that allows half acre lots. So they have, it's a little hard to see. So um, given, given the formula you, you mentioned, um, given the formulas, what, what are they short? Like what, when you're talking about like how Four much? lots and a short of four acres? No, it, so four, they, need, they need to come up with four acres to get four more lots or they, need, they, need, they, they just need more open space to guarantee four more lots? To go from, they're proposing 50 lots. And, and without They're doing allowed anything, 46 okay. without doing anything, unless you say that this this open space area can be included. Otherwise, they need to gain a couple of acres. The open space right now is the delta is a little over an acre. Or I'm sorry, density. So we're we're yeah. dealing with two different things. The open open space is very close. Yeah. Because um, right. there isn't much wetland on the property, um, and. The density, the, the 50 lots is based on, if you looked at the zoning map today, you'd see over 50 acres, that's not C1. But that does, as Amy had said, include some of what is now uh, PEC, that wooded slope that we're protecting uh, and not you know, following all code requirements for development. Uh, but we have 50 plus acres of RE1. And you know, re really, when you exclude the, the woods, it's uh, just shy of 46. So it, it's one of those, 
code, nuance, technicalities. So just to give you, I just want to give you a quick. Um, so so for, for density, they need to come up with four acres? I think it's just shy of it's four like acres. 3.4 based on the uh, PEC line work that the county shows, sewer pack shows. So this yellow, I just want to, this yellow, the yellow lots are one acre in size. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything on the west side of the north south road is one acre. Then the pinkish color are 30,000 square foot lots, right? And then the, um, I don't know what color that is, on the east side, those are half acre lots or more. So they get a little bit, it's a transitional zone from what you see to the east to what you see to the west. And what we're looking at here is 46 houses, or is that 50? These are 50. Okay. 50 on, on the 50 plus that's our mm -hmm. E1 right now. Okay. So when we're looking at the plan unit, we're looking at the whole rectangle, or we're chopping out the small square well, in the middle? So when we started all of this, they, they were you trying to determine whether or not they had to use that rectangular piece. Um, the question is if the does the code allow it you know it says that school sites can't be included is is this part of a school site um, and can they chop Somehow. they only need uh, how big is that block 20 the school the athletic fields are a little over 22 acres oh, wow. that's there right now so they need I, less than four acres um, I have a question just on the density question that was brought up a lot and, and you guys are experts in real estate I am not so I'm learning but what so I get the whole transition but what's the size of the home strategy as you go and the like you know what I'm saying because I the size why pack a lot a lot of stuff in close to downtown if you don't have to as a community we've got other farmlands down the road I'm just I'm trying to I don't I don't know you guys do quality work, so it's not, and you heard that today from a lot of the residents. I don't understand the strategy of what the homes will look like, size, square feet. I guess that's down the road, right? We're talking about just basic, mm -hmm. but, but that has, at least for me, that plays into yeah, they'll the question. Have, they'll have to provide um, developer, rest or not develop, subdivision restrictions that show what type of development they're going to bring in. Right now, they're at a level where they don't know what they can even develop because um, you know the other subdivisions like I've learned here in the last year that the two acre lots the one acre lots people don't want to buy because it's just a lot more to maintain right so we've seen in some of these other new subdivisions that while they're one acre lots there's a lot of green space that's common space so the act the homeowner actually doesn't have to maintain as much and, and so it's got this different feel at least from my perspective of of what a subdivision looks like where this looks very standard, like you'd see anywhere. And again, I'm not good at this yeah. stuff visualizing well, it. So maybe I'm I can just help you with the macro view on that. So, you know, um, it's the same concept that we're talking about in having, you know, a diversity of lots, some of them smaller, um, to allow different price points within the development, number one, and to try to create uh, housing that's in demand in you know, our urban area of the city of Delafield as opposed to doing half acre lots and then smaller out in larger areas where you'd have, you know, tracks of these types of, of homes. You know, just like the, the economic development and land use group said, I mean, when we're gonna do these types of size lots after reviewing the whole city, their suggestion was this is the area that you'd wanna do that in. And I think if one of the questions is why aren't they all half acre and then just more common open space or a, a set size, all one size and more, you know, common open space. Um, part of that is to, to offer that diversity. You know, you yeah, I wasn't you suggesting all the same size. I was just like, again, I can't visualize, but uh, I'm the park and recs representative and we had a meeting on Monday and one of the things that along Cushing trails, trails, they got to be, let's not get caught into a, private subdivision trail it's got to be a public trail right mm -hmm. and so are there is because I'm getting into your green space are there are the trails in here and does that meet all of our 
requirements for green space or public space. I, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking ahead. Right. Yeah, and the, the big things we're doing for the, for the public and for the park are a bike and hiking trail along Oakwood. That is shown as an eight-foot wide paved trail. That's uh, what the city engineer had said. That's where, what the expectation is right now. Uh, keeping that, that type of multi-use trail through the development in the right-of-way, all public, uh, and then the same down through the woods to Cushing Park. And that doesn't play into any of the concerns about green space or? It, the, really what, we're, what we have is- Technically kind of trails, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, our code says we can't count trails as green space. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just asking the question. <laughs> yeah. It seems kind of weird, so but- it's, the, the code conflicts um, with itself and typically, so it, it defines what a common open space is and it excludes trails, but then it then the actual requirement for how much open space you have does not mention common space. And then the, the way it's written, you would think it's not meant to include, be the same because it actually conflicts with some of the things in common open space. Um, typically, in most municipalities, trails are included because the developer is providing a benefit to the community and it's an incentive to allow them to develop. I mean, the community probably wouldn't necessarily be able to do it themselves without the development take place. And, it, and the idea behind common open spaces is to have spaces that benefit either the owners of the subdivision at large or um, the owners of, or the entire community. And then your ordinance goes an extra step and says you can actually put those in the private lots mm -hmm. and that's why you're that's why the PUD looks a little bit different than Hawthorne Farm and Nagawica Heights they put them in common space these folks are benefiting from the provision that allows them to put it in private easements mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make a couple comments about um, so I, I bought my lot and built in 1999 a quarter mile north of here and I was nerdy enough to look up the city zoning to see what was possible to go in around me. I like being between two lakes because I know there's not going to be a you know, a bus terminal or something um, <laughs> coming to my backyard. Um, but also the people who lived along, bought homes along the golf course also, I'm sure if they did their due diligence, looked and s looked at what the possible zoning would be here as well. And it says very plainly RE1. I mean, it's one house per acre. And what we have here is a development that abuts the, the nearest um, lots to the west are in a RE1 subdivision. And, um, and so they got one acre lots all along the side <coughs> there. And I like the fact that, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be great if there was 20 houses and they were nice and affordable and there was no, no traffic at all. But um, understanding that this is what the zoning allowed for and to meet your open space requirement that you're putting in a buffer strip where people can't put a swimming pool 20 feet off the rear lot line in these other people's backyards is very appealing and it and it phases the density from the one acre subdivision to the west to the homes that are you know there's 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 a half dozen to a dozen you know six or seven homes to the east of them that are a fifth of an acre and so phasing it in there makes a ton of sense to me and I like the connection of the uh, walking path to downtown um, that's a couple of my neighbors said are we going to have a path along Oakwood or are we going to be able to get downtown walking? Yeah. And it's like, yes, like, mm -hmm. great, because they don't want to go, they don't want to walk down Highway C. Um, so I, I think there's a lot about this that puts people at ease about what has been on the books for the last 30 something years mm -hmm. as far as what could possibly happen to the golf course and what might be realized. And I'd like to see something that, um, well, two other points. Um, not a fan of the connection road to, to through Cushing Park. I think we'll get to that later. But um, understanding it was, had, it was in people's minds and it was designed in as a possibility 30-something um, years ago. I don't think it's realistic to do based on lots of reasons that were stated. And the other one is um, I asked for it just for uh, Southern Hawthorne Farms, and that is and specifically for a, for a church, as far as where the exit was, as far as headlights fanning into someone's face. And we had an accommodation for a home at uh, across the street from Christ the King. When they did a remodel of their parking lot, um, the people at, um, uh, I always forget the name of the place, it's right by Fireman's Park. They re remodeled oh, the man, no. nursing home. Um, Clearview. Oh, Clearview. Clearview. They, they adjusted it based on neighbor's input, so they didn't strike. So that's a, so how to, 
space that exit on the north so we're not right into one of literally six homes in about a half mile stretch. Um, it'd be rude, be a bad neighbor, so that would be something I think we should move. But I, I'd love to see a way to get this plan realized and if you have to <coughs> dedicate a space on one of the fields that would not be part of any future development that would be used to meet your density requirement, um, whether it's part of a public institution or not, or private school, I, I think that's fine. So those are, that's, that's my input on this. Uh, but I, I think it's a good, I think it's what people, reason, a reasonable person would expect would be likely to go in based on what's been on the city books. Can I quick talk about the road extension? Um, it was brought up quite a bit. So the developer is not proposing the, the road extension, just to be clear. Um, the reason why uh, city staff asked the engineering, asked engineering staff to look into do it, uh, look into the issue, um, because it was on a 1991 thoroughfare map that the city adopted as part of their master plan. Um, it was taken off of that map in 2008, so it is no longer uh, included in the master plan. But with any development, we did this with downtown and a potential alley. It's not that we are on the front end supporting or encouraging something to happen. It would be um, short-sighted of the city to not consider all of our options. This is the time the property is being developed. This is the time to review and consider any potential extensions, impacts um, that would take place. And it is our understanding that that uh, bridge was constructed to meet public road standards if it were to potentially be constructed in the future. So it was thought through by the city in the past. So instead of just breezing by it because um, there's concern, we need to make sure that we're doing our homework to ensure that it really isn't um, uh, appropriate for that site. So I just want to point out the engineer did um, provide a comment and um, letter. And he does say, you know, it is feasible. You can pretty much engineer anything to happen. However, uh, there would be impacts related to the floodplain, wetland, um, environmental corridor, steep slopes, yep. and then you would be um, encroaching on the roadway and fill limits on the on the parklands. Um, and you know, understanding that wetland and floodplain impacts do require DNR approval, and in this case, because it's right on the Bark River, it would also require Army Corps of Engineers approval. So there, there would be a lot to go through. Um, but it's in here because it's this is our initial kick at the cat, and I don't know if the public is aware, but this is the first time this committee has seen this plan at all. There are many steps to go. They need to go through a um, formal amendments that go through the Common Council. They need to go through a subdivision plat. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that needs to happen before this gets officially approved, and this is just one piece of the analysis. So it's not, no, you know, it hasn't been a recommendation of anybody at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I walked it today, too, that, that area there, and I think it's a perfect place for a path, just to walk through. There's, and that's there's what the applicant proposed, a path. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I... I the people who asked, I said it's, it's prudent to officially vet something that was on the books at one point as a possibility because whether you, if you're just looking at a city map without consideration for the memorial and the things that you have to consider, um, I mean, where's a logical place to put a, another access point from the north through downtown and it makes a ton of sense on, on a, just a Math. If you're building Legos or, or whatever, um, but when the I think the 2008 is date is consistent when with uh, when the park was getting done and uh, when the Memorial Walkway was uh, fundraising and all that was started. So it got killed, and this is a good way to officially put it to bed. I think. Yeah. Is to bring it up. It cost a million dollars too. Over a million dollars. I don't have it. So. Not, not even have any idea how it would be paid for, but <laughs> if it was taxpayer dollars, it'd need a referendum. Yeah. <laughs> Does the plan commission, um, because we're here get to, to give the applicants um, advice, are you interested in seeing a traffic impact analysis? I don't believe that's been prepared at this time. I'm, I'm interested yeah. in seeing Yeah, yeah. Yes. definitely. Yeah. Because that was the big concern by the public today yeah. in their comments. Yeah. 
the density. I'd be interested to know, um, and I'm, I'm assuming, well, the traffic analysis should show it, but what, in, in conjunction with the other, I'm assuming they do them together, but um, mm -hmm. uh, what percentage of the traffic from this particular development proposal would be expected to go down, what is it, um, Wisconsin and Anderson, or what are the two streets? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What percentage would be expected to go through there? Because just at a glance, I'd say, a good 50% of it would probably exit that way, but I don't know. I mean, I think I'm assuming a traffic study would show that, but yeah, if it so doesn't, we need to highlight. Well, a traffic study is going to show the change in the current state to what a yeah. future state would be along those roads. Do, do you, can, you, can you pull up the map that shows their development and where the, the roads are? And can you guys just speak to how you've envisioned uh, the traffic? I know that was something that was discussed at the staff level. It was our expectation if you zoomed out you'd see Exeter Street, which is on the south side of the St. Can you make it campus. bigger so we can see Do you want me to just go to the GIS map? Maybe that's great. better. Yeah. So if you're going, if you're going to go south on Genesee, uh, likely that you'd exit on Exeter Street. It's the southernmost connection for the subdivision. Uh, heading north uh, and, and going north, whether it's on Genesee or anywhere east or west, you're going to go direct to Oakwood. So I would not expect much traffic from this on Wisconsin Avenue. We do, on uh, this plan, <coughs> show a widening to at least 24 feet wide to where we uh, connect to where the, the Beacon Hill project is, just so you have a standard uh, public road, two-way public road. But I don't, you know, when you start looking at, at this plan in the context of the larger neighborhood, there's just not really a use or a need to go through the north part of the existing campus. I think you need to fold this TIA into the other one to the east as well. Yep. And not just look at volumes of traffic, but stopping site distance on Highway C on Genesee Street. Mm -hmm. There's been some talk that that may not meet standards. Uh, one, one thing that's interesting to note is that a golf course, a public golf course like this, the, the average daily traffic is actually more than what 50 lots would generate. Yeah. According to traffic consultants. No, I'm just saying interesting. I yeah. mean, yeah. I would love but to that, see, that's, the, I mean, love that's to see a, the data. It's over the whole, whole of the day, yeah. right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Um, uh, any thoughts? I mean, oh, yeah. people tend to f just, you know, the tra we need the facts, right? I, and it's not, doesn't do us a lot of good to, I, I, you know, guess but I just generally speaking people tend to find a natural way to make things work right and if that even means going to the north and heading west to get to P some people are just going to choose that as the least stressful option to to go right so it's tough to to assume what's going to happen yeah. people mm -hmm. tend to figure out ways to make traffic work better yeah. than you might think I guess is what I'm trying to say yeah, and it, it was great feedback. We, we heard the need for a TIA a traffic study, so mm -hmm. absolutely. Looking at density on there, uh, I, I'm not saying anything's, you know, your layout, I find it interesting. I like the transition going through uh, for a lot of reasons. But utilizing the athletic center, athletic area, that's not public accessible, correct? It's, it's still something the public can't go on there. Like, a, example, not like going to Cushing School, where there's plenty of kids during the course of off time. They go there and they play. This is not something that the public has access to, even if your development went around. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. So for me, looking at that and saying, let's tie that into it, I don't really agree with that, because it's not accessible in any way shape or form it's just an open space that's what i see it as uh, now if you own it that's one thing if you could bank it for future usage and say okay well if at some point in the future that that disappears you now have four acres or as as just an example number that now have to be set aside for green space or something specific going you know for future development possibly well, then i would say that that's something that could be used as a as a tool to get that dens the density as you're proposing yeah and we, and we haven't gone down that path yet and that's what makes this project a little bit unique is because we do we do own it all right um 
but we not we have not uh, gone down that path with St. John's as far as possibly carving out a few acres to meet our open space requirements. Yeah. So that's something we would have to uh, we have to vet. And uh, and I'm not saying just carve it out now. I'm saying just it could be set aside for during if some, at some point in the future, not just saying okay now that we got that. 20 plus acres there, we're going to pack that in with the houses of what we have around us. No, now you have to set aside a necessary amount of acreage. Sure. Well, I, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I, what I suggested. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of like, I don't know, this whole thing about 70 acres? 74. Okay, 74. so I mean, if you came with a proposal to put 74 houses on here and you said that fields would never get developed and have an ironclad guarantee it wouldn't, it's the same thing. So I mean, you could do it today, you know, and you're, just, you're guaranteeing. I mean, the density, right? It's that density yeah. is guaranteeing a maximum amount of development would occur in a particular spot of land. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that's how I would interpret it. No. Yeah, I mean, it's well, it's it's kind of complicated because there's density and open space, and they they turn out differently um, yeah. when you run the numbers. So they're put they're really pushing their limits to meet the density requirements without needing that space by doing all of that <clears> private. Um, preservation. So I don't know what would happen if they threw in 74 lots, if they would be able to I'm, pull it off. They might not. not. I don't to, know. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. so like the road. They didn't ask for that either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, feedback would be nice to, to hear. Maybe this isn't the only correct body for it, but we have along the river, um, you know, right now it's shown as a private outlot with a public trail easement. Is that the long term expectation? <coughs> There's no need or interest or consideration of public passive land acquisition you mean in what? your calculation or no just in the future land use like no well there is i think the result would be the same for you but um, it would it would change not, our development not, I, it's just help me i'm not following what you're asking so, so we have you right show now, us on the map what he, where he's, yeah, right he's saying now. this 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 green area that's being protected it's just north of the city owned um land yeah. would the city be interested in extending their ownership Who's who's extending whose ownership? That's my only question. Josh is would, asking, would the city be interested in ex expanding the city's ownership into this preserved area so that the city owns the trail and the land underneath it? And how how, how does that help the process? It doesn't. It's it doesn't. A, just simply a question as we prepare to move forward to know if just basically is that an interest or not or not known right now. Sometimes through a subdivision plan process, it's a form, it's a, it's a way where dedication can occur without another, you can subdivision, through a subdivision plan, you can dedicate land to a public entity without any further um, deed or legal process. So. On the face of it, I would say, yes, we'd be interested in that. I, I would say the river walk, it, the city wants to really protect that. So you don't want houses and finished landscape right up to the river walk. There's got to be a lot of space there, right, to preserve that, that well, environment, that experience. And, and there are two are. walks. There's yeah, a I know. real walk, and then right. there's the trail that people yeah. use on yeah. the other north side that's of it. That's a there. good point. And keep in mind, that side of the river has the path that yep. is unmain not maintained, mm -hmm. and other than maybe if a tree falls down, we'll go and move the tree out of the way, but yep. otherwise it's, it's, you know, people use it, but yep. it's, it's the other side of the river. It's the north side of the river. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking about, the north yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm saying on the north side, even up farther, we want to make sure we preserve that. Well, I guess yeah. you're saying yes to his question then, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I will say the Park and Rex Committee yeah. had a lot of interest on Monday <laughs> yeah. about Cushing Park and what is or isn't going through, which I, mm -hmm. I think we've all heard where that's headed. And then just the, pr the preservation of the Bark River and the work that's done there and the the natural environment that it is. You know, you don't want to be walking along the north side with the finished subdivision and the nice green <coughs> golf grass right yeah. there, right? I know, which I know you guys are not going to do, but yeah. I want to emphasize that in, in your plan Great. and in our collective review. You couldn't do anything with it. It's a big steep hill. It is a big that. steep hill, and that's, yeah. that's the beauty of yeah. it. You have great vegetation and topography that separates the two. Yeah. Okay. I think it's great that you protected some of the fields for St. John's. If you guys redo the diagram, could you correct the name of the field? It's Jim Duggan. D-U-G-G-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> 
Is this micro? Okay, sorry about that. I asked them to take a look at, first I supported their protection of the fields for St. John's, but I just asked them to correct the name of the field because it's Jim Duggan, not Jim Duggum. My father-in-law. That, that was the punch yeah. Surveyor, I'll, I'll make sure it's right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice. So back to density though, because this is important. This is what they need to apply for. If so, like there are a couple of options. One, you can stick with RE1, and they're going to have to figure out how to meet the one acre density. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you need to determine whether or not they can use the park space, or they could rezone it to a different category. Is rezoning it an option to you for consideration at all? Rezoning it to something lesser than an acre? I, I personally like their struggle with the open space where they're carving out areas that people can't develop along the west edge and some other places. I don't like that you have to struggle, but I mean, I like the fact. <laughs> no. I think rezoning I don't might change rezone. those dynamics. I don't mm -hmm. want to rezone. No, I agree. Okay, so if they stick with RE1, um, you think they should carve it out for use, ownership of the, um, well, it doesn't have to be ownership necessarily, use of the owners versus the school? I'm okay with it as long as it we it permanently can't be redeveloped, I, barring some other. Now, I who actually uses I, it? You know, I, yeah. as long as it's taken out and permanently can't be developed, I'm okay with it. I'd, I'd say it'd be like an outlet that's just yeah, not that's a typical how it's outlot. Looked like is an outlot. There, there you go. Can't be developed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I believe uh, procedurally our. The expectation was we would do a CSM in advance of a plat to separate the two so that the plat, the CSM would have the whole subdivision be on its own lot and then the subdivision would divide that. The athletic fields would just stay as well. Ha yeah. two I mean, of the we'll CSM. have to talk about that because if you need that acreage, we're going to want it tied to the subdivision. Yeah, so we'd, we'd have we'll to have some sort of language of a preservation, mm -hmm. open space mm -hmm. restriction. Can do it with a deed restriction or not? Yeah, not that's really. what I was thinking. I, let's talk about that with the attorney. You want this yeah. to be as tight as possible so that they can't just, you know, wiggle out of having to keep it in open space. So mm -hmm. um, we can, we'll work through that. But I just want to compliment you guys on, on attending, you know, the various uh, uh, citizens meetings that have taken place. You've clearly, you know, we, we, it, you're never going to please all the people, mm -hmm. but you've made a lot of efforts to try to please a lot of people. And I think with some of the other comments that you heard today and the request from the planning commission meeting, I think you're, in my opinion, you are definitely heading in the right direction. Yep. Well, we look forward to it. Yeah, thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, we will move on to number 10C, <laughs> DLC 0792992-1307 Genesee Street, DLC 0792074439 St. John's Road, DLC 0792069, and DLC 0792078411 St. John's Road. And DLC 792073 and DLC 792060. Unknown addresses on Wisconsin Avenue and St. John's Road. Owner Hendricks Commercial LLC applicant Christopher Miller. Miller Marriott Construction Company applicant seeks feedback. A conceptual presentation regarding a potential single family residential development on property located between Wisconsin Avenue and St. John's Road, as well as a lot located to the northwest corner of Wisconsin Avenue and Genesee Street. Would you oh. mind kicking us off, Amy? Sure. Okay, so this is another piece of St. John's, in, mostly in between Wisconsin <coughs> Avenue and St. John's Road. There is that um, one, one piece in the um, northwest corner of Genesee Street and Wisconsin Avenue that will also be included, probably as a separate certified survey map, separate from the subdivision. So currently this, this piece is, um, 
zoned PI public and semi-public use and in the land use plan as institutional. So they need to amend the zoning and the land use plan where the last one just needs to potentially amend the land use plan and get a conditional use. This property, the development that's being proposed, if rezoned to R4, which is what they're proposing, would not require a plan unit development. So it would be a straight rezone. Um, they're proposing R4, which requires a minimum lot area of 7,900 square feet, a minimum lot width of 66 feet, and then the street setback would be 25 feet, and the side and rear would be 10 feet. It does match the zoning um, to the adjacent properties to the north. And I think something that's really important to know about this property is that... So right now, although it's used by the school a little bit differently, hold on, there are 36, 12, 24, 36, there are 36 legal lots of record already out here. So per statutes, um, you have to allow people to um, utilize a legal, they can be resold as legal lots of record. Um, if there are some, if the if a previous structure hasn't gone over the lot line, and it hasn't previously been combined or separated, so there there would be a couple of ins, instances here where structures would go over lot lines, and maybe they would lose a couple lots. I just want to point out this has already been platted um, with quite a few lots um, many 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 moons ago. Mm -hmm. um, the the reason why they're doing a subdivision plat and not just using these lots as they're laid out is that they would like to vacate the road um, um, alley going east and west and then vacate these two roads. And instead of having those two roads going north and south, line up with McDowell with a, um, an outlet, uh, outlot that would include a public path to, for people to, to pass through. Um, so just you know keep that in mind. So here's their drawing where they have the public path going through the middle. They vacated the two roads um, so that the lots, some of the lots will actually be a little bit wider than, than those uh, lots that were originally platted. And then their stormwater facility, you know, due to like the city lot grid pattern that they're proposing, um, they are proposing um, swale features in, in easements. And that's something we'll have to um, discuss internally as staff how um, you know, if this area is sufficient for stormwater management um, based on the development that's being proposed, and if it, if it is, how to ensure that those areas are protected and, and maintained as swales. Um, and then the northwest corner up here, northwest of the intersection, um, that is one big lot, is that correct? One large lot. It already is zoned R4. They would split it into three lots. Um, I believe that would that could come in here anytime as a certified survey map for um, review and approval. Just so you know. Uh, what am I missing? Two, two, two. Um, they, the lot and the previous site will be served by sanitary sewer and private wells, and uh, you know we'll need to review the detailed stormwater management. So in this case. Um, you know, we'd like to see you provide some feedback, and then if they proceed and you recommend approval, they would need to come in with an application to amend the land use map to high density residential, which is what the focus group had recommended, <coughs> and then rezone the property to R4. And then it'll have to follow or, uh, with the preliminary plat, and the CSM can come in whenever, it, whenever they so choose. All righty. One, one thing, Amy, to to touch on maybe is the public roads out here. Uh, this plan proposes sidewalk in the right of way uh, around our, you know, the whole block of new homes. Can you, um, so they have those red lines, they're a little hard to see on the screen. Those are the um, sidewalks, correct? It is correct. Yeah. And trying to promote walkability, connectivity of a connected neighborhood. And then uh, the roads are less than 24 feet wide. So this project at the upon completion was, was proposing to have a 24 foot wide paved road. How, how wide is it today? 18, it varies 18 to 20. Depending on which road you're looking at. Uh, St. John's has 24 feet in spots and it's parking off it. 
It would be rural, no curb and gutter. Correct. All right. What is the blue? Is that just landscape or vegetation? What is that? Um, those are the proposed swales and stormwater okay. facilities. It, a lot like a biofiltration swale. So really, you know, we picture it as the native kind of wild, wildflowers, butterfly gardens. It's going to be an easement. It's going to be depressed so that when it rains, water would, would go to there and soak into the ground. It's really what's happening on this property today. So we're embracing that and kind of managing and controlling it and its overflow elevations, which I'll go eventually would overflow to south. So we'd probably have a stormwater maintenance agreement then? If Definitely. Yeah. yeah, if that's good. Be. And easements, and we'll want to talk to them more about if, if the city's okay with easements, how we ensure those don't get filled in. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to be prominent and obvious. Um, usually when they are this prominent and somebody fills it in, the neighbor's going to call right away, but that that's is something. That's a good point, though. That's when that happens. Yeah. Um, are, th are there any buildings currently on any of these lots? Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can see them on this plan. I can. Yeah, I think three. I, I five or could see five. like a shadow on it. Right. Do you see? There's there's outlines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think one of the one or two of five the other ones might have been torn down. Oh. Well, I know when you first come in, that first house is the commander's house. The old president's house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a big, beautiful house. The whole house at the very west end is still there, too, but it's getting old. Yeah. I bet you they'd let you move it if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so today, Amy, you're saying that this could be developed. Well, they could sell those lots off, they could individual sell them, lots. They could sell them off. They are planned and zoned institutional, which is in the city's favor as far as what you can do with each individual lot. So could lot? a house go on those lots? No, it would have to be, right now, it would have to be an institutional use. The problem with your land use plan is it also says if it's not owned by a public entity, it shouldn't be in the institutional category. So even now, no. Hendricks owning it, um, it technically, I mean, it's, it's simply not owned for institutional purposes. So it's got to go into some category, but it does give you the leeway to decide what that should be. But they are legal, lots of record, and if lots, if structures haven't gone over the lot lines, you, we can't control the sale. I guess I was trying to address the public comment on side yard setback. Yeah. Oh. And if that existed today as 10 feet, um, and it would be 10 feet for their proposal, okay. But if yeah. there really isn't. I don't know what the yeah, side yard is for institutional. One of the things, Amy, if you go. Well, it almost over, doesn't matter, really, yeah, for right. institutional. I mean, it could be minor, too. I don't know. So, so there's a couple public comments, and. Um, I think thoughtful comments about all the all garages and I think one of the things we want to be sensitive to is developing a nice streetscape like we've done in some of our other developments and so the houses that we showed in our pictures I think if we I, I included them in some of them some of the documents Chris how wide are these lots again roughly they range from from 66 to I think 76 Josh two-thirds are 75.8 feet wide so yeah two-thirds of of the lots so so we've already gone through and tried to widen some to allow us to give variety of houses so if you look if you yeah. stop and look at that picture amy those are houses we have built on these lots to the correct dimensions so we're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes those are homes i I happen to know that home right there is in downtown Heartland. We built it on about a, 60, a 66 foot lot. So we've already built that house with a side entry garage in downtown Heartland. One of the, the things that we're going to do different in this subdivision that we haven't done before is we are going to build all the product, not just manage the architectural control. So people are going to have to build with us because, quite frankly, it's just been tough managing the architecture of other builders. We just want to control that. Um, if you go to a couple other pictures, again, we try to be realistic on what we envision. There probably will be some garages that have to face forward. But again, we want to make it, this is a good example. Again, that's a house in the sanctuary of Heartland. 
if you look at that house, it's very house centric. Now the garage is forward facing, but it's a little bit farther back than the, than the, than the front porch. So again, the house becomes more prominent. That's our vision. So um, we are sensitive to what this is going to be like. Um, and, you know, that house right there actually, um, kind of the second one down, uh, the brown one, I think that could be a very typical house that would fit on one of these lots. And that has a side entrance garage. So when you do a side entrance garage, you, you may have a couple houses that are a little closer, but then another ones are going to be a little farther away. So it creates some variation. And then we also try to incorporate lot width variation. And as we kind of laid this out with Josh, that was the thinking behind it. You incorporate that with a little bit wider streets and some sidewalks. It really gives Delafield another housing variety, especially when you look at what's going on the golf course next door. It kind of transitions and, and it creates more variety for the city. Do you know how many, do you know how many properties are north between Wisconsin and Anderson? Apart from the property on the southeast corner, I mean, are the property, I mean, it, it's, it's not comparable because it's not squared off, but do we, I mean, I can't tell looking at, I'm looking at the GIS map and I can't quite tell. I'm just wondering if it's a comparison or not, I realize. Well, the zoning, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, is R4 and that's what they're asking for. It's exactly the same as what is to the north. Right, I'm just trying, that's fine. Does, yeah, I roughly I'm, I'm, does, I'm, the, does the zone, do the number of houses reflect the zoning? I've got 30, well, I don't have houses. I've just counted 30 lots, and then they can legally create two more, so it would be 32 lots. Okay. There. If, if, am I understanding the question? You want to understand how many lots we're proposing on the south side of Wisconsin versus what's on the north side of Wisconsin? Yeah, is it comparable? Yeah. Is the density the same? I realize the zoning is the same. I just want to make sure so it's, it, it's not out of And I'm just doing a count from a picture. I, so it looks to me like there's 12 or 13 houses to the north. Again, it's off a GIS photo. I, it looks to me like some are at like zero lot line setbacks. Um, not sure about all this. You'd have to do some surveys. Some lots have been double combined. Um, so it looks like there's 13 and we're provo proposing 17. Not that far off. 17? On that one side. Along the street. Yeah, oh. street so to street. But Mike was looking at that entire, oh, from I don't, I don't Wisconsin have enough, to Anderson. Yeah. I don't have enough home. data for it. Yeah. I mean, I did, that block versus what you're doing. I did a yeah. cursory check in there. I mean, there's there lots that are there's a handful of lots that are below a fifth of an acre mm -hmm. to the north. But I, th I think, you, answer, I think you, you answered some of my concerns on how to translate some of the, cust uh, the um, customers, the <laughs> citizens' comments about um, mm -hmm. when you look at a plat map like this, it looks cookie cutter, and they're envisioning row housing with garage, 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 mm -hmm. stairs, and then door hidden behind it. Yeah. And and so I don't know how we um, guarantee we're going to get what, what you're promising other than the, the review of what, what your, your intentions are. And you showed some good examples of, of homes. And, um, and the fact, so one of my questions was going to be, can you attain a side entrance garage on these? And, you know, a smart, a smart subdivision that is not, because despite, regardless of the density to the north, they're angled different directions. They're different homes built at mm -hmm. different times. There's character and there's, you know, it's like, hey, well, you got a house that was built in 1945. Mine was built in 1972. And, you know, they're angled. Some people Late carried over different lot lines and stuff. And, um, and so, yeah, there's character. It comes with age and it comes with, um, with that. And when you drop 37 houses down in two years, the tenancy is going to be it's dated, it's the same, it's cookie cutter. And what you're showing it, that's not your intention. And I don't know how we guarantee well, the I intention think, versus well, I think the real I mean, product, right? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you'll have a list of whatever it is, 12 different houses that you'll build there and it'll probably pretty much stick to those 12 houses. Is that true or not true? Design. 50% um, of our product is totally custom. 
So I think there will be people here that do just custom homes. We design it specific to them. I think 50% will take a variety of a home that we've shown you a picture of and modified it to fit. So it'll be a variety of that. Um, the way we've managed that in the past is when we do put together the um, declaration um, or the covenants, we personally, because we've had problems managing other builders' architecture, is that we put pictures of expectations of homes. It's really easy to look at a picture and say, you know, I get it, that's what I want. But then we, you have to put it in writing, it's, then they can kind of craft the house around your writing, you know? So we've done it with, we add pictures um, to our declarations, and that's helped. Can you, because um, the declarations are really probably the, the best way to control that? Yeah. Like agree to a certain percentage of different styles yeah, so I th or I, 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 um, coloring? I think, yeah, I think we could, and I think we could talk to, you know, how we want variation in garages and things like that, because we want that as well. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to, like, surprise anybody here. Yeah, Mike, I, this is unscientific, but to the section above, I just looked, I counted 22 roof lines. That doesn't mean 22 lots, 22 properties. I'm not saying that. I was just looking at the what I could think was roof lines. What did so I the, say? I so think this is 30, 37 30 lots, lots. And it's 30, 22. Yeah, I counted 29. So we're right some, there. Some if you haven't been through still. any of the subdivisions that they've built, the, um, the one in Heartland being, I think, the newest, I mean, go look, go look at those houses. I think you'd be very proud to own one of those types of houses on a small lot. Um, yeah. There's a lot of character to them. And I, I think that's kind of what makes this <coughs> proposal as enticing as I think it really is, is uh, the quality and the type of architecture that they're going to put on it. Right? That, that really makes a difference when you're talking about these small lots and the, the quality of the houses that you're going to build. It's um, yeah. It really makes a difference. Yeah, I would agree. The, the, the photographs you're showing of your architecture style, I, I think, are fantastic. Thank you. And, and I think You can thank Jim and Ben and back. Yeah. Well, thank They're you. the ones that do it. <laughs> no, it, and, and I think that's important to know that, uh, that it is a compliment to the area. And, and I know that's what you want, and yeah. that's what you know, Hendricks wants, and that's what everybody would want. So I think that's a plus when you're looking at that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're lucky around here to have builders that are used to building on 50-foot lots with 10-foot setbacks, so really narrow houses, so these are a little wider. Yeah. I don't think Jim heard the compliment, so make sure you tell him. <laughs> he heard it. He's just trying to get home. <coughs> Any other things uh, you guys want them to have for the next time that they come outside of the normal stuff? Landscape plan? Tree plans, yeah, whatever. Yeah, land, oh, yeah kind of example thing. of landscaping. I, I, I would be interested in knowing at what cost it would be, and I know it would be two lots probably, but, um, um, you know, there was, there was so the two, the, the concerns I heard, the three concerns I heard from the public at least was um, traffic, which I know you, you need to do a robust traffic study to make sure that, I think we'll streets and sight lines yeah, and we'll do it with, together with the other yeah, one separate, can, can handle yeah. the development um, and then you know what it does to the character of, of the neighborhood you know how, how houses would look um, another one was the straight the straight lines and so a, a visual of you know how the how the variance the, the variability in the housing could accommodate that and I wouldn't mind seeing maintaining one of the streets there and not vacating it and having a couple, you know, that'd be four houses at least that would pull driveways off of the street and break up that so you long know gets, Well, not necessarily. What gets kind of awkward with that on these small, small city lots, I just had somebody on Bleecker Street, I think it was, talk to me about it. In order to meet the setbacks, oh, you would have your to house into the turn, you're, you're pushing yeah. your backyard into somebody okay, else's right. Yeah, the, the setback, side. it's... All right, and, I, and I'll just uh, I'll also comment that I mean we're we're trying to serve both masters. We're trying to keep green space and mm -hmm. lots of you know fewer homes on bigger lots, but there's also a huge criticism of the of the city that we don't have affordable homes for people to move into, especially close to downtown. I'm not saying these are going to be cheap houses because they're not, but um, 
the ones of the West, I mean, those are going to be million dollar homes on, on average. And um, we need people that aren't all in million dollar homes hanging yeah. around our city. I don't know how far these are going to be from a million well, dollars. Well, I mean, though. I'm just saying, <laughs> there's a potential that some of them aren't going to be. But I know what your goals are. So they should all be million dollar homes, right? But someday. To everybody that owns a house that's a million dollar house. Right. <laughs> if there, yeah, if there's some way in the diagrams, you can, because I'm looking at the, the houses look great, developments are great, but trying to translate what you've done in sanctuaries versus this because it is row housing i know there can be variety but if you can show elevations of what examples might look like with the houses you'd put in there it certainly helped me yeah. trying to envision yeah. what it looks like so we did lay out on every one of the lots a potential house so and, and that's actually what we started to develop in some of these rendering softwares this this picture here is the sanctuary of Heartland. Those are 10 foot setbacks on the side. So again, it, you can see sometimes they get a little closer, sometimes they get a little farther back. Um, but we, we did start to um, put together some renderings. But again, we, we didn't limit the amount of work we put in just because we were looking for some direction first. And we could start to do some streetscapes and different angles and, and show the, the board. I think that helped. Yeah, because yeah, when, like you said, when you just look at the plot, it looks very, I mean, even though we've got a little bit of a curve to the road, it looks very row hard, very standard. It looks like it, it doesn't look like what you're probably going to end up with. So I think that'll help us and the public yeah. in, the, in the months to come. And I, I think we can do that for you. The other thing about landscaping, Amy, is there's a there's a fair amount of mature trees out there. I mean, we we really do want to keep as many as we can. Yeah. Um, we actually went to the pain of trying to some of these pictures. We do think these trees exist pretty close to where they are in this picture. So we want to maintain them. Some are going to have to go. I think like the the maybe the 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 trees that are between the sidewalk and, and the right of way. Those are street trees, but most of these lots are going to be maintained by the homeowners. Now, I will tell you that I have been thinking in the covenants to put um, landscaping maintenance and snow maintenance in the covenants managed by the HOA. So I have started to kind of noodle that a little bit to create a little bit different product than what's going to be next door at the golf course. Can you get a somebody out there to do a tree inventory type size location as soon as possible? <laughs> I think Jim just volunteered for that. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Josh will have someone out there. Yeah. yeah, and that actually will need to be done on the golf course too. Not for the areas undisturbed. I mean, like the corridors. Yeah, I don't think yeah, there's that hardly any trees. trees. <laughs> How many, Josh? Let's count them. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Otherwise, thank you very much for bringing this proposal. Uh, just like the golf course, I think you're really heading in the right direction once we get some more facts and uh, get some of the questions that were uh, answered, that were asked by the citizens, as well as the Planning Commission members. So thank you. Thank you. A Amy, I do have one question. When I was leaving the office today, I was asked if we have to have something submitted by tomorrow to make the next agenda. And um, what would that have to be? Yeah, I'll. We have a post plan commission meeting, an internal staff meeting tomorrow morning. Okay. Let me have that, and then I will get back to you with what and when things okay. are necessary. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Uh, number 11, Comprehensive Plan Zoning and Ordinance Revision. 11A DLC 0792059, DLC 0792061, DLC 0792062, DLC 792063, and DLC 0792058001, Genesee Street. All properties are located south of Exeter Street and east of Spanger Street. Applicant City of Delafield provide feedback regarding amending the land use plan category from the institutional category 
to the high density residential category in accordance with the economic development focus group and recommendation and initiate a land use plan amendment application. Amy. So I already explained the, the focus group efforts, but because we are on St. John and we're gonna need to get through all of the focus group proposals in the next several months, um, and we've got the, the, the neighbors in here, I thought it would be a good idea to just go ahead and talk about this last piece that's part of the um, Hendricks future development. So it's this red piece, but east of the um, Kemper Road or, or the golf course property. So you can ignore the red rectangle south of the green area. But the area to the east of that was designated as high density residential by the focus group. And so the goal would be, depending on your feedback, these would be taken through the land use plan and if rezones are required to, you know, on each site, whatever it is, um, they would be three separate resolutions so that in case one of them gets hung up, it doesn't affect the other. Um, this property does not have any development proposed and we, we would not pursue any kind of a rezone at this time. So the rezone would take place um, whenever a development would come in. So high density residential is your highest density category of more than four units per acre. It doesn't mean that you have to allow 200 condo units. Um, it just means they get four, more than four units per acre, which um, Chris Miller's development that just came in, I don't have the exact number, but I think that's like 4.3 or 4.5 units per acre. So that, that, that needed to be in that category, just to give you an idea of what that me might mean. Or this might be this might be a different product. You know, this this may come in as a condominium, more multifamily. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with the uh, recommendation that that be high density, and I mean that's again a very appropriate place to maximize the development for the city, uh, preferably condos. Uh, and that type of development, uh, but I think that's a, a real good opportunity to, to further increase the tax base in the city of Delafield. Is this where it overlooks the river? Yes, could be uh, beautiful. Perfect place, yeah. Could be beautiful. Place. Does that include Liberty Park, that parcel? No. No. No, okay. no but the post office is in here, and, the, and I don't want to forget, the focus group did recommend <coughs> that even now, so we wouldn't rezone the overall acreage but that the post office should be in the CBD one district so I don't know if that gets pursued immediately or not but that was a recommendation there is a the lease on the post office ends and I, I want to say 2024 or 2025 the, really? the, yeah the lease is up wow. so how far I can't tell how far west does that go um, it would line up with this Kemper Road let me so Chris Miller's development is right here, or I'm sorry, right here. Mm -hmm. And the West End is this road, or I don't know, Spender Road, Kemper Road, whatever it is. Um, it, it would be east of that. So it looks like there's a bunch of tennis courts. Oh, okay. Oh, there's okay. a couple buildings in there, too. Yeah, Next very to the old tennis courts. Yeah. Utility yeah. buildings. And then there's a mechanical, or yeah, mechanics building down right. in there. Yeah, and keep in mind, Memorial River Walk is not part of it, and then whatever's corridor is is held to different standards. So it's kind of like you said, it's up on the bluff. It'd yeah. be like right. Yeah. yeah, and it's owned institutional right now, or what's mm -hmm. it? It'd be perfect. Yeah, sorry. And because it's, it's and be, and this would be an action view. taken because it's now it's privately yeah. owned. It is privately owned, but the the impetus is really the um, the real reason. Yeah, regardless, okay. it's the focus group effort that we're pursuing but it is owned by Hendrix mm -hmm. obviously we're, no, we're not talking about changing the zoning just the land use so the zoning yeah. doesn't get changed until an applicant comes in with some kind of proposal okay. I, mean, yeah. I get it yeah. I'm, I'm most comfortable and I get the difference between land use and zoning but um, I'm curious why why it would make a difference if we pursued the land use change now versus an applicant with a great idea that may may or may not want exactly what we're proposing land use be. 
mm -hmm. um, and entertaining that and maybe taking those actions when they come to our table. Well, the idea behind the whole economic development land use plan is to look at different areas of the city and be proactive to try to encourage development by changing the land use that applicants know that that's the direction the city would like to head in that area. You know, a number of the proposals that we've had over the last year and a half <clears throat> wouldn't have come in if they weren't for, you know, the discussions that we've had about land use. And that's what has made people to, to look harder at the city of Delaware Field that, you know, the, this is different than what they had talked about in the past. And do I or do I, I not have a product that can, can, can fit that? So it, it's kind of it's a, a marketing thing. Yeah, yeah. And if somebody and really, came up with something different, you can always change that. We always change plan. We can always <laughs> order something. Somebody else. wants a farm on that hill. <laughs> yeah, grapevine. I get it. I get it. I, I Winery. It. Sure. That's why I asked the question. I was hoping for a good answer, and I got one. No, I, I get it. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to change it. So we need a motion. So that would be because this would be city initiated. It's not being done by an applicant. You actually need to initiate the application for a land use plan amendment um, to the high density residential category. And then next month, I would bring it to you with a resolution. And then and then schedule a pub, the 30 day public, there's a 30 day public hearing notice that would need to take place um, with Common Council. I'd probably want to line up those dates with the other proposals, if that's even possible, just, just for the um, neighborhood so they're not coming uh, don't have to come to multiple meetings we'll try to consolidate does anybody want to do a traffic study on this while they're doing the other ones <laughs> <laughs> well i do think <laughs> so <laughs> well in, in all in all seriousness you you did have the um the sa or i call it the sa they don't own the property but the corn the property on the corner of maple avenue or actually it was the gun club did a tia they included in their TIA a potential development of the property in the corner of Maple Avenue and Hillside. So, I mean, you could do that. We could. We I, mean, could. I, I wouldn't mean, mind asking to do it. Of, once you get one of those studies going, the overhead just to add a what if would not be that big a deal. We could ask these folks who are here. I think it would be uh, proactive. Maybe two separate analyses so that it doesn't uh, come, the results yeah, don't come back. Yeah. If the city's the applicant and you really want a traffic yeah, I, study, I don't know. then ask for the traffic true. study. And it could yeah. taint what they want to do yeah, up there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, I don't think I would pursue that. So you need a motion to initiate the application for this? Yes, sir. All right, then I'll make a motion. If I, if I wrote it wrong, please correct me. To initiate the application for adjusting the uh, land use the high to high density. I'll second that. All right, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, 11B, City of Delaware Field Text Amendment to Zoning Code, discuss and provide a recommendation to Common Council regarding text amendments to the Zoning Code to modify application deadlines. <coughs> Amy. So I talked about this at the last two meetings. I think there is a draft ordinance in the packet that just um, consolidates all deadlines to 28 days instead of um, whatever, the various days. And um, I think that's really the bulk of it. Just as a, a matter of correction, because there was a public comment about how notice requirements haven't been yes. met. I just want to clarify, notice requirements have been met. It's just your ordinance falls short of that um, requirement, but the city has still been requiring that people apply and meet the notice requirement. So we've been no, following all state required notices yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're not changing anything so that we will now comply. We have yes. been complying. Right. <laughs> Very true. And I know we have. All motion to recommend that Common Council adopting closed ordinance that modifies the application deadline requirements in the zoning code to be consistent between application types and prov provide additional time for staff review to ensure applications are complete. Nice, nice. 
That just oh. comes out of me. Nicely <laughs> 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 done. I mean, so, I think a lot of like, You really, you, you you really bl- blossom <laughs> after 10 p.m. <laughs> That's right. That's I'll, I'll second that. <laughs> or a second. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, yeah, I'll third that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think I'm ready to get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who who oh, was the second? I, I missed it. Laura. Laura. You yeah, got it. I okay. Did. Uh, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay. 12. Report of city officials. Planning commission meeting dates and deadlines. Regular meeting July 27, 2022. Regular meeting submittal deadline July 12th. 2022. Uh, B, I referred to any correspondence that are in the packet. Uh, planner, any comments? I'm good. Good. All right. Building inspector. Nothing to add. Nothing Thanks. to add. <laughs> Seeing no further business, we are now adjourned at 1014. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting.